hurricanes have been downgraded to a tropical storm. I mean, it is a great opportunity for us uh, to turn our season around, to, to truly make a stand. We beat number one Florida State in Tallahassee, go two and two. We're back in the top 20. It's, our, it's the launching pad for the rest of the season. And amidst all the sound and fury, there's an air of determined desperation. We have one win. No, we have one win to a Division II team right now. And that's, that's just not good enough for the University of Miami. When you play the number one team in the country, it does something different. You knock off the number one team in the country, people open their eyes back up again. I think that's what we have to do. Well, what you're looking at now is a live shot of Dope Campbell Stadium, 77,000-plus on hand. And this is the rivalry that they love, the team that they love to hate. And the same can be said this time next year with these same two clubs meet down in Miami. This is one of the really heated togetherness things in all of college football. It's the Seminoles and the Hurricanes. Well, if you think this place is rocking right now, let's join public address announcer Nick Minikoff for a special pregame presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Tonight is one of the most exciting nights in Florida State history. Tonight, FSU will do something which it has done only four other times in its 49-year football history. FSU has had its share of legendary football figures. Some had dazzling talent, some a ferocious competitive spirit, and some a charismatic personality, but one, one had them all. Ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention to the North End Zone and join us in welcoming back Prime Time! Joining Dion is longtime friend and FSU equipment manager, Jimmy Calloway. Dion Sanders was FSU's first two-time consensus All-American and the first Jim Thorpe winner to wear the garnet and gold. He starred on the football, baseball, and track team. And now it's virtually impossible to see a jersey number two without thinking of Deion Sanders. Tonight, Deion joins Seminole's great Fred Belitnikoff, Ron Sellers, Ron Simmons, and Charlie Ward in receiving the highest honor for an FSU athlete. FSU Athletic Director Dave Hart joins Deion to officially retire jersey number two at the end of this season. Congratulations, prime time! So we will take a break. We'll be back with the toss of the coin in just a moment. Well, Deion Sanders has joined a select group. Only four others have had their numbers retired. Charlie Ward, the Heisman Trophy winner. Ron Simmons, the dominating nose guard. And two of the Seminoles' greatest receivers, Ron Sellers and Fred Bolitnikov. Leah Dion tonight as he holds up number two. And it now is retired here in Seminole country. Now let's go down to the field. Referee Terry Monk with our toss of the coin. You'll speak to Florida State. I have a commemorative coin. I have a mem commemorative coin I'm going to give both captains tonight. Miami, you have the choice. Call it while it's in the air. If I drop Good it, we'll toss it again. Hey. Heads is called. Heads. Heads is called. It is tailed. But the toss would be your choice. Take a half off. Florida State won the toss. Declines will select the second half option. You'll have your choice to start the game. 
They'll be receiving. Which button would you like to you turn your back here? Turn your back here. So the toss of the coin, and we're just about set to get this 1995 edition of Florida State and Miami underway. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried, and welcome to another CFA primetime game right here on ESPN. You know, Mike, if I were Bobby Bowden, I would not do a win one for the Gipper speech tonight. I literally would go down the top 25 scores from today and read all the upsets and say, you're smart enough to understand this is what's already happened today. Florida State is a, a two and a half touchdown under our favorite coming into this ballgame. And a rivalry like this, should anybody be favored by that much? No, there shouldn't be. But, Ron, when you take into gra for granted the fact that Florida State's offense is so prolific in scoring behind Danny Cannell, so many weapons. But in talking to the Miami players yesterday at their walkthrough, they believe they can win this game. Okay, Mike, then be specific with us. What does Miami have to do to stay in this football game and have a chance at a Cinderella position like Northwestern's already done today and North Carolina teams like that? I think two things. One, they've got to keep the ball and defense in front of them. They cannot give up any big plays to this potent offense. Second thing is they've got to be able to run the football and keep Danny Cannell on the sidelines. Now, to do that, Danielle Ferguson has to have a big game on the field before the game when I was down there. It looks like his ankle's bothering him a little bit, so we'll have to keep But they need great play out of their tailbacks. Okay, Mike Adamley is down on the sideline as usual, a very busy sideline. Michael, let's go down to you. Indeed it is, Ron and Mike. You know, first-year coach Butch Davis came to Miami with a vision and a plan. Problem is, it may take a while before he reaps what he sows. In accordance to NCAA rules, coaches can spend only 20 hours a week with their players. That includes practices and film sessions in the game. Now, that is tough for a young team, a young rebuilding team. And make no mistake, Miami is young. Tonight, 19 of the 22 starters on the field for the Hurricanes are underclassmen. Three of those underclassmen are true freshmen. Sophomore quarterback Ryan Clement is making his first collegiate start. Needless to say, the Canes will have to grow up in a hurry. Gentlemen? Well, that they will. Butch Davis, first meeting against Florida State since 1987. Of course, he was an assistant coach with uh, Jimmy Johnson, and now with the Hurricanes. And on the other side of the field, Bobby Bowden. This is one of the few clubs that he has just simply not mastered. Miami, 6-13, and 13, his record against 2-8 and eight in the last 10 meetings. Tony Gator, number 22, back as one of the deep men, along with Trent Jones, number six. Bentley set to kick it off for Florida State, and we're underway. Gator, three yards deep, he will elect not to return it. So let's take a look at the Russell Athletics starting lineup for tonight. On offense, a quarterback, what a place to get your first start. But Ryan Clement, I promise you, he's going to grow up very quickly tonight. He'll have to. The wide receivers, Util Green is the go-to guy. Averages over 20 yards per reception. And on the offensive line, Coach Keogh says his center, Casey Jones, is the best that he's ever coached at Miami, and he's been down there for 17 years. in motion, but they go to Ferguson, hit in the backfield, and he's going to be knocked down for a six-yard loss. Tyrant Marion is the man who penetrated and knocked him down for the loss. Defensively for Florida State, up front, extremely tough, as you just saw, Reynard Wilson, second team, second on the team in tackles. The linebackers, finally they get Bush back. He's been injured. His was a knee. Todd Rebold back tonight. He was out for two games with an ankle injury. And then the secondary, the situation here, Marlon Green will start because free safety Sean Hamlet is playing hurt. We'll see him tonight, but Hamlet is going to have to have his knee scoped after the game. So a face mask on the play at five yards, stepped off against the Seminoles.
Ferguson. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Breaks off a tackle. Has five. Has ten. Counted off at 13. And Sean Hamlet, who we were just talking about, number 18, who will have his knee operated on after the ball game, is the man who makes the stop. Ron, this is what they have to have. The Hurricanes need to run the football. Danielle Ferguson looks like he's going to be hit in the backfield by the linebacker, Daryl Bush, but steps out of the tackle, picks up good yardage. Now, this is a Florida State defense that's given up a lot of yards in the first few games. North Carolina State, they scored 77 points on, and it looked as though they beat them badly, but they ran at will early. They just kept turning the ball over. This time at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Sam Cowart will step up to plug the hole. Also, Canel Spain, number 96. As you look at Ryan Clement, and those are his numbers. He had to come in against BPI. And Collins was injured. 16 of 32, 255 yards. And he will be greeted in the backfield by Carlos Joseph, a freshman out of Gainesville, a fullback. Where's number 40? They go with Joseph, spins off one tackle. He'll take it across the 40 to the 42, and it's Wilson who gets off the bottom of the pile, along again with 18, Sean Hamlet. Talked to Ryan Clement yesterday on the field here as they walked through last night, and he said Gino Toretta gave him the best advice this week. He said treat the ball like it's gold. You know, avoid bad plays. And he said we have a chance to make some exciting things happen in this ballgame. I like his attitude. I mean, he's ready to play. Mikey had dinner with uh, Gino this past week, and Gino said, first time I went up there and, uh, and played, I threw interceptions. Don't do that. Yeah, he said, you can't play any worse than I did. <laughs> well, Jay Ina was the first one to come out of a stance. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Snap. It'll remain third down. They try to prepare for noisy situations. Miami's been in a bunch of these games, though, so I don't think that should affect them this ball game. They jumped early here. Mike, in the ball game that they had two weeks ago against the Virginia Tech, there they got just numerous penalties for the same thing. Offensive penalties of people not being set, going in motion too quickly. Draw play, Ferguson, big opening. Boy, he gets whacked just shy of the 45-yard line, and it's going to be fourth down at about four yards. And we expect to see Mike Chrissy come on to punt it away. And we might mention, as there is a standing ovation for the defense, Chrissy has not been without his problems punting. He averaged barely over 32 yards a kick against BPI. And they have a defensive lineman, Denny Fortney, snapping, so we'll see how his snap scores the game goes on because he's going to be chasing Danny Canal around. Off the side of his foot and not a very good kick. This is going to go dead at the 37-yard line. That's only a 20-yard boot into that win. So let's check the starters for Florida State on offense. Danny Cannell, well, he played in this game last year, but he has another year under his belt, and quite frankly, he is the reason this offense is going so well. The wide receivers, it's a very good group, but Andre Cooper is the leading receiver. He averages just over 100 yards per outing. And the offensive line, well, it is a veteran group with the man in the middle, Clay Shiver. He's the leader and a very good one. Clay number 53, senior out of Tipton, Georgia. Florida State from that shotgun, and they set up a screen in the flat. Wow, what a hit. Earl Little came up from that cornerback spot and just obliterated the play. It'll go for a loss. Here are the starters for the Hurricanes. Kennard Lang, he was a preseason All-American. The linebackers, this is a very good group. Ray Lewis is the man in the middle. They say that he may be as good as they've had down there. And in the secondary, Tremaine Mack having to start tonight because of a neck injury to Dennis Scott. Canal on top and way too long on that pass. Cooper is the man that he wanted. 
Ron, Nick Ward, a freshman, is starting at the defensive back position for Miami, so they're going to pick on him. Now, he played high school football as a freshman and sophomore, didn't play as a junior, as a track athlete. They gave him a scholarship, but not until May. No one recruited him because they thought he was a track player. He's got his work cut out for him tonight. He does. Carlos Jones is the fellow that normally starts over there. Direct snap. Goes to Dunn. Breaks the tackle, and then he gets whacked at the 37. He'll take it back to the initial line of scrimmage, but now Florida State is going to have to punt the ball right back to the Hurricanes. A sword fight here early, trying to feel each other out. And the one thing about Miami, they got a lot of athletes that can run, so they can match the speed of Florida State. It's athlete versus athlete. There's nobody going to pound at each other. Gator is the deep man. Liss, driving kick. His longest punt was 55. This is going to be the longest now. Good heaven. He banged that one about 62 yards. So let's take a break. No score. We'll be right back. Prior to the ball game, and that is the normal procedure here at, uh, at Tallahassee. There were so many photographers out there, they literally had people directing traffic, making sure they didn't get run over by a horse. Hey, Ron, the first series, they really tried to protect Ryan Clement a little bit to get him into the ball game. They tried to run the football early, but that's got to be the game plan. Ferguson with a handoff on the slant, and he'll take it out very close to the 25-yard line. Peter Boulware, sophomore out of Columbia, South Carolina, comes over to make the tackle. Danielle Ferguson looks to me like he's at full speed. Ryan Clement wanted to go to Notre Dame. He said, I always wanted to go to Notre Dame from the day I can remember, but when I got timed it, when it was time to go there, Ron Paulus was there, and I knew he was the heir apparent, so it came down to Florida and Miami, and he said, I just felt like Miami was my place. Well, he will, uh, as we said in the pregame, he will do a lot of quick growing up tonight in a in a place like this, he will not play in a more hostile environment than what he's seen here tonight in his first start. Throws the pass and has it incomplete. Dropped at the 26, and let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, on the scoreboard show, we showed you the 40-24 to Colorado loss to Kansas and told you that Coy Detmer played in portions of both halves, twice re-injuring himself, that time without contact. Word from Boulder, he will undergo surgery to repair the torn ligament. He is out for the remainder of the season. Ron? What's well, a shame for Boyd Detmer because he's such a competitor. Yeah, and maybe that's what brought him back. Maybe he was too much of a competitor, Mike. Maybe right. Third down. The line to make is the 30. German loses the ball. It is recovered by Miami. What a great effort by Omar Roll, number nine, because that football looked like it was going to go to Florida State. It sure did. They're going to say that he was down, short of the first down, and Roll really gave up his body on this play, and he limped off the field. So the Hurricanes will have to kick. Pressure, and they're coming after him. Gets it away, and again, this one's going to die coming into the win. Fair catch, and now a flag is down at the 47. As Feaster had to make a running and diving catch. This is the one thing when you play Florida State, you do not want to give them this good a field position because they do not have far to go for the score. Holding. So it's a holding call against the Seminoles. So we'll take a break. No score. 9.23 left in this opening quarter. Art Keel, the offensive line coach of the Miami Hurricanes, talking to his offensive line. Mercier, number 62 there that we're moving by with the camera. He is a true freshman. Out of Montreal, Quebec, Mike, this time last year, he was playing prep school football. Fishing, probably. <laughs> Actually, he's a skier and a very good competitive skier. Does trick skiing. Fifth best in Canada a couple of years ago. Straight ahead with the handoff, Warwick Dunn. Weaving his way, breaks off a tackle, and he will be across the 40 and going to have a gain of about seven yards in the play. Danny Cannell, of course, is having a great year, and I talked to him about the Miami game last year because I really think he grew from that game. He said, I wanted, when I walked off that field, I wanted to absorb the sickest feeling I could because I didn't ever want to feel like that again. And he said, that's in my mind in this ball game." And everybody on that offensive line, everybody on the offense talks about his maturity in that last year. 
Pass over the middle, has it complete. E.G. Green on the receiving end, and that'll be good for the Seminole first down. Last year against Miami, remember these numbers, Mike? Three interceptions and one particularly early. And the Seminoles had driven right down the field, and he threw a bad interception. And it was a week later at Clemson that they benched him in the fourth quarter. And really, that's where he grew up a little bit because they told him, they said, we've got confidence in you. You are quarterback. We're going to call the plays to you. And they go to the draw play. Done. Weaving getting to the 45 and the Seminoles are in Miami territory for the first time tonight as Eugene Ridgely comes up to make the stop and also Lewis is there. Lewis, I mentioned it in the lineups tonight that Lewis could wind up being one of the best that, that Miami's ever had as you look at Ridgely. And, you know, Clay Shiver said an interesting thing yesterday that he said, we have to be careful. He said, this guy is so good and so quick, he can make the tackle on every play, regardless of where you run it. Williams takes it right up the middle. Pooh Bear is close to the first down at the 42-yard line. James Burgess down in the bottom of the stack. Ron, it's just a matter of time again till they challenge the freshman corner, Nick Ward, number 27. Now Miami will try to get extra DBs in the ball game to give him some help, but he's going to be isolated on the outside against some pretty good receivers. And, of course, Florida State continuing to use this hurry-up offense. This time, Cannell goes under center with an eye formation. And you can see the defense of Miami creeping up toward the line. Exactly where they went, Mike Godfrey. Mess him on the catch, and it is a Florida State first down. Well, they're getting a good cushion on the outside because they've been able to run the ball successfully. Now Miami has to try to stop the run, which puts the defensive backs on a little bit of an island. Earl Little out there against Wayne Messam. But you've got Andre Cooper, number one. He's the long ball guy they like to go to, and he's working against Nick Ward. Then breaks it to the outside. He will have another Florida State first down as he gets cracked hard by Nick Ward. And Tremaine Mack was also there. And let's check in with Mike Adamley. Michael. Well, Ron and Mike, the only way to watch a Florida State game on offense is with a stopwatch and a calculator. Some incredible numbers here. For instance, their average scoring drive, 1 minute and 43 seconds. Average play game per play, nearly 8 yards. And then Florida State's 59.5 points per game is tops in the nation which is great unless you're the Florida State defense it is a concern for Bobby Bowden a double-edged sword the offense so good that the defense is on the field a little too often <laughs> and Mike we have already seen some real head crackers in this ball game tonight both teams want to get so involved Terry Monk has just warned both clubs and told them they have to get back beyond the restraining line Cannell on first down, deep over the middle, overthrown. E.G. Green is the man he wanted, and Tremaine Mack was trying to cover. Tremaine Mack did a nice job on coverage there against E.J. Green. They're just trying to spread out the field and work those receivers one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. Danny Cannell trying to get the ball to number 19, E.J. Green, but very well covered by Tremaine Mack. score six minutes 47 seconds left in this opening quarter done nothing a tackle he'll take it to the outside oh what a comeback block he got and he's inside the 15 yard line nick ward will make the stop on him and it's andre cooper number one i believe mike who yeah. came back and deheaded a defensive you're, player you're right it was andre cooper who comes back to block tremaine mack number three you're going to see andre cooper now the good tackle by nick ward the freshman just trying to get in front of ward dunn Gain to be 11 yards. And again, Florida State will not huddle. Mike, for your defense, how much of a problem does this cause as far as not being able to come back, huddle, and talk to each other? Out in the flat, done. They caught him in the blitz at the five, at the two, at the one. It will be first and goal, Florida State, as Tremaine Mack knocked him out of bounds. Ron, to answer your question, when you do not huddle, the defense never gets a chance to huddle either, so they, don't, they really don't get a chance to encourage each other. That's number one. The other thing is the quarterback has a good view for 25 seconds because you're always going to line up in what you're in. So it gives the quarterback a tip. Well, the guy who has already scored eight running touchdowns, Clarence Pooh Bear Williams, has nine. Florida State's on the board. 
Well, Pooh Bear's using that 283 pounds that he weighed in yesterday to get in that end zone. It's a good blocks by Andre Cooper. You mentioned the one. He came back in that last run by Ward Dunn and made a key block. Scott Bentley in to attempt the extra point. Now flags everywhere. Illegal substitution against the defense. That's the other problem with the no huddle run. You get confused in your substitutions of getting people on and off. And even, even though it's an extra point, you really sometimes end up sometimes with 10 on the field, sometimes with 12 on the field. You've got to be really sharp in your substitutions. Mike, I'm only counting 10 out there right now. What do you get? 11. <laughs> Bentley with the extra point right down the middle. So we'll take a break. And we look at Pooh Bear scoring one more time. 6-12 left in his opening quarter. 7-0 Seminole. So Florida State goes on top. 7-0. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, it starts with College Game Day. 12.30, Penn State takes on Purdue. 3.30 and 7, it scores in the high lights. At 7.30, Tennessee marches into Alabama. And at 10.30, we put a period on the day. Butch Davis working with the defense on the sideline and talking about, it would appear, Mike, the blocking scheme that the Seminoles are using. Well, the problem, that we, we talked about the no huddle. They get you in certain defenses, and on that last defense, they had tried to play six people against the the eye set, and they're one short, and that's the problem. Warwick Dunn's a little bit tough to bring down in that situation. Ten plays, 64 yards, three minutes and 11 seconds, says Bentley. Has it teed up at the 35-yard line. And he will kick it away to either Gator or Jones. This one is returnable. This is Jones at the 10. And he'll take it all the way out to the 31. Interesting story as you look at Clement coming on the field. Uh, of course, Bentley is from Aurora, Colorado, and uh, Ryan Clement is from the Denver area. And Bentley said, sure, you know, I knew all about him in high school, and he had some great praise for him and talked about he thought he would wind up being a very, very good quarterback at Miami. But he also said that Ryan Clement's mom works at a sporting goods company, and he orders socks from them. And he said, I got some coming. I hope she doesn't send orange ones. Derek Harris in motion. There's Clement to throw. Got his man wide open, Jamie German, and he will take it right up to midfield at the 49-yard line. Roll comes over to make the stop, but it's a gain of 17 yards. A lot of poise by Ryan Clement to try to answer a score with a score, and he's got some weapons on his outside. You match Daniel Ferguson against Warwick Dunn, and you match the receiver, Jamie German and Latell Green. They're two as good as you're going to face all, the country, all over the country, so he's got some weapons to work with also. When you look at Jamie German, number seven, he's now a junior, but when he was signed, he was going to be like the second coming. He was going to be the next Dion, except on the offensive side of the ball. As you see the running play, they go for a couple, and then Gator just disappears under the stack, and it's Andre Wadsworth who makes the tackle. German, it would appear, is getting close to stepping up to that mark that they expected, but Mike, he ran at a, at a coach's camp in high school to coming out. A 4-1, like a 4-1-2 or something like that. He was the player of the year in high school, coming out of uh, high school. And he reminds me a lot of Derek Stiegel up at Georgia Tech. Young receivers are going to blossom into great players. Trent Jones is the setback this time. Second down. The pass. Misread there as Jatiel Green threw it behind him. And let's check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike, what do you have for us? Ron, we know it is quarterback you. Miami certainly has produced a lot of great ones. Who does Ryan Clement most resemble? Knowing the quarterbacks that have been in this program for the last 15 years and watching the, the Kellys and the Cozars and the Testaverdes, he most l resembles to me Craig Erickson. He is a fierce competitor. He's got a tremendous amount of confidence. He's got a live arm. Uh, and he relishes challenges like this. Well, right now he's got a challenge. It's third down, and if he wants to keep this drive going, they need to make the 40-yard line. 
pass knocked down and almost intercepted. Samari Roll came up to knock it down. Germany attended receiver. Just a quick three step out, but Florida State's in a very sound defense for this play. Samari Roll just does that, rolls up and knocks the ball away. So not a good play for the quarterback to throw that ball against that defense. Chrissy tries to kick it away from Feaster, who calls for the fair catch and then runs away from it. And now the ball is going to go dead down close to the 10-yard line. 37 yards in the kick. Catch NFL game day on Sunday when Boomer and the boys analyze the aching perfectionist, Troy Aikman, educating a rookie. And the Vikings' Robert Smith, long, strange trip. NFL game day, Sunday, 11.45 a.m. sharp. Well, Mike, uh, Miami has moved the ball. Maybe, maybe better than Florida State thought they could early. I still think it is very important for them to get points in this first quarter. Well, they don't. They're going to get run out of here because Florida State's capable on every play of breaking it for long games or long touchdowns. Warwick Dunn is on the bench, and Rock Preston, number 24, comes in at the tailback spot. And that's who they go to. Preston, did he hold on coming out of bounds? Yes, they say he did. A catch, and he's out of bounds at the 14. Florida State coaches talk about Rock Preston. They say he loves the game. He's a team jokester. He keeps everybody loose. Pretty good substitute to put in there for Warwick Dunn. Good hands, good concentration, bringing this football in for completion. Yeah, you take out Dunn, who averages 10.7 a carry. Rock Preston averages 9.1 per carry. That's not too much drop-off, is it? And they say they have a great young guy in Dee Feaster, South Carolina, back of the year. And you see the handoff to Preston. Comes over the right side, running hard. And let's go to Mike Tirico. Michael, what do you have for us this time? Ronis McDonald's breakaway takes us to Berkeley. And Southern Cal may have two quarterbacks in Brad Otten and Kyle Wachholz. They're getting the job done. 13 touchdowns and one interception this year. This touchdown to Tyler Cashman. And the Trojans up five. So the Trojans, Mike, don't seem to be too uh, distracted by what happened with them last week with the suspensions. Mike Adam Lee was telling us he watched practice the other day at Southern Cal, thought they were a loaded football team. Again, the tailback. And Preston, boy, you could, there is really some good hitting going on in this football game. You see guys break it through, and then all of a sudden they just disappear. And it was Ray Lewis who made him disappear that time, along with Kennard Lang. When you're good on offense, you're good because you have a good offensive line. This team was recruited offensive line-wise five years ago. Great experience. You look at 104 career starts by this offensive line compared to Miami's defensive line, young defensive line. Here comes the blitz. Florida State rolls the pocket, so they got single coverage, and they get it complete to E.G. Green, who's trying to break the tackle, and he's going to be stopped at the 37. Great play call by Bobby Bowden because when you are in the shotgun a lot, you like to get your quarterback movement and roll him out every now and then to change where the pocket and the quarterback's going to be. Rolls out to the left, and they had a blitz called, and a good, great offensive call against the blitz to E.G. Green. 7 to nothing. if you've just joined us. Florida State, we have 341 left in this opening quarter. And Cannell going to go on top, looking for Cooper, and the ball almost picked off. Coverage by Carlos Jones, who did not start tonight. He was benched to start the freshman, Nick Ward. Carlos was beaten a couple of times in that VPI game. But the coaches do not want to give up on him. They're giving him another chance here tonight, and they're working Andre Cooper against him. Now, Andre Cooper has made so many of these basketball R.C. Owens leap, leaping catches, almost made this one against Carlos Jones. You remember R.C. Owens, right? He used to draw it to him all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Flag goes down. Cadell swims it out of the pocket. It's Preston, and that is a nice open field tackle by Twan Russell, the linebacker, junior out of Fort Lauderdale. Miami has always prided themselves in having such good, quick, well, I mean, their linebackers can run, and there's a good example right there. Ron, you talk about quarterbacks here in Miami. John Stark, remember last year he was alternating. He's, uh, Mel Kuyper's got him rated as the second-best quarterback, maybe coming out in the draft. He's playing at Trinity now, college in Chicago, and any high school having a great year. You got Thad Busby, who's the backup quarterback. Formation on the offense. 
Didn't have seven men on the line. Repeat second down. And I think that Busby's going to be a great player here and a great pro. And then you've got Kendra, who came in here as a high school phenom. So they've got so many quarterbacks. Uh, and, of course, John Stark now, he transferred, so he's playing the Trinity. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. We'll get into that more in just a bit as the pass almost picked off. And that was a nice job by Carlos Jones. He really played possum, played off of it, and then broke very quickly and almost made the intercept. Well, they're working on Carlos Jones now. I figured they'd work on the freshman, Nick Ward, but they're going to work on this position all night because Carlos Jones, as you said, was beaten twice against Virginia Tech. But he really does a nice job with his left hand here, deflecting the ball away from Andre Cooper. Well, this is going to be a holding call against Florida State, and the Seminoles are moving in the wrong direction on this drive. with the penalty and moves it back just short of the 13-yard line and it is going to be second down and the line to make is all the way out at the 46. Canal scrambling just throws that one away threw it at the feet of Rock Preston I don't think he was trying to complete it as Kenny Holmes was all over it. Kenny Holmes may be their best defensive lineman here but the problem with Miami this year is they do not have a dominating defensive lineman like a Cortez Kennedy, Jerome Brown, Russell Maryland, Warren Sapp. They do not get that. They're not getting that play out of their front four. So people are singling their front four, and they're able to get to their linebackers a little bit this year. They need play out of Kennard Lang and Kenny Holmes tonight. Mike, look at this. It's a third and 33, and look how the secondary and the linebackers are playing. They are in center field all the way back to the 35-yard line. Three-man rush. Canal has the ball knocked out of his hands. He could still throw this thing. Puts it in the air, and it's just overthrown. Messam is the man that he wanted. Kennard Lang was applying pressure, and the one who knocked the ball out of the hand of Danny Canal. Kennard Lang, coming from that defensive end position, slaps the ball away from Danny Canal. Now he wisely picks it back up, tries to get the ball to Wayne Messam, almost had a big play, but penalties killed that drive for Florida State. Sean Liss, his last kick was 62 yards. And Miami's coming after him, and they block it right up the middle. It is recovered for a Miami touchdown. Trent Jones is the man who picked it up and took it into the end zone. That's what they needed in this ball game, Ron, because they need confidence. They're coming off a one and two record here. Lost tough game to UCLA and Virginia Tech. They needed success in this first quarter. You mentioned it earlier. They needed points not to get run out of here. A good special teams play by Miami. Trent Jones, of course, is one of the two deep men on kick returns, but he also was on special teams on the punt cover team and he got in and picked up the ball that had been blocked Miami short men out there right now for the extra point but this I think this is a circle the wagon game for Miami this they need to play well in this ball game because everybody's kind of down on them a little bit and you don't expect Miami to be one and two expectation level so high Bobby Bowden now trying to figure out that protection on the on the punt that's uh, what, what awry on that. Well, a little payback for this guy, Tremaine Mack. You remember last year, Mike? He was the guy who snapped a couple of those balls that they had problems on their kick team. And so tonight he gets a block. Trent Jones scores the touchdown on special teams. There's some saying about payback, but uh, Tremaine Mack really just bursts through and blocks this punt. the layup game as you mentioned they were having trouble getting enough special team folks on the field because of the excitement on the sideline and very patiently Dane Pruitt is uh, lining up to kick this one attempt it back beyond the 15-yard line Bobby Bowden knows full well that in this rivalry this ball club Miami for instance in the last 12 meetings Mike Florida State has led nine times going into the fourth quarter. Miami's won six of those games. And this, Nobody has handled Florida State that well. No, and this has been a tough series for him. He is perfect. 
So we're tied at seven. As you look at Mack, and Mack has taken another look at it. A redemption for Tremaine Mack. Number three, you're going to see him come free, and it's just a busted blocking assignment by Florida State. But you're right when you say, Ron, here's a guy last year that was maligned for a bad snap, maybe a coverage problem, also a blocking problem by Miami last year. But he is able to come back in here, start this year in the defensive back position, and block this punt in the first quarter here, recovered by Trent Jones. Big, big series for Miami. So, let's look at this last series for Florida State. They had three penalties. Danny Cannell did fumble the football. He did pick it up and get the pass away, but they had a third and 33. Jeopardy that they got themselves in, and now all of a sudden, because of those mistakes, Miami's on the scoreboard, and we're all even again with 252 left in the opening quarter. And Miami's got enough speed and enough skill to match the skill and speed of Florida State. They may be one of the only teams in the country with the same type of speed. Florida probably has that same speed. Nebraska now on defense. Bobby Bowden chewing that gum a little harder and across the way. Butch saying, well, <laughs> we want to we want to win the first half or at least play even. And Butch Davis brought Joe Avizano, the Dallas Cowboys special teams coach, and so it paid off. And he worked with their staff. Going to be picked up by Jermaine Green. And he loses the ball, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Florida State's ball at the 18. And Mike Adamley, let's go back to you. You know, Ron and Mike, all week long, Bobby Bowden has praised Miami with good reason. The Canes have broken his heart too many times. Miami has handed the Seminoles its first loss nine times. Four of those times, it was their only loss, causing them four possible national championships. And a lot of tears have been shed here in Tallahassee. Miami's record, 10 and 3. Well, you know, you probably you would say that the Hurricanes with the team of the 80s, the, the way they played, the Florida State was two wide rights away from being the team of the 80s. Oh, you're right. Two field goals. This time from the I formation in the running play, Gunn will be short of the 20-yard line. Bobby Bowden said Miami's ticking. They're just not clicking. You know, and uh, they're still ticking. And Chuck Amato, their defensive coach, told us at dinner the other day, he said they're like a time bomb, ready to go off. They got great talent. Cannell with the no huddle. Second down, the line to make is out of the 27. Done again at the right side, sneaking his way out over the 30-yard line, and it'll be a first down plus about six yards. The Warwick Dunn came into this game tonight averaging 10 yards a carry, and he is off to a good start. A quarterback in high school, he was an option quarterback. Mike Carroll, all the upsets today. If you want to know where the big things happen today, take a look. That Texas Tech, Zach Thomas with an interception as the game was winding down. Big win for North Carolina. Done. Hanging on for dear life is Ray Lewis, and he will stop the play just across the 35-yard line. One of the things Bobby Bowden also will tell you is, after last year's Sugar Bowl game, he looked at his defense and said, we're going to have seven guys coming back. He didn't think those two juniors would go out to did. Well, they did, but they were down to five. Then three of the other regulars got hurt, and they wound up in a situation as Rock Preston just drops the football. But they had about one returner that had started last year at the end of the year on defense. That's another reason they've struggled on that side of the football. Injuries and new faces. Rock can't believe that he dropped that one, but just wanting to see where he could run with the football before he caught it. He had some space also. He would have been able to pick up five to ten yards. But that's what speed does to you. Draw play to Preston. At the 40, dragging a tackler with him to the 41-yard line. Now you come right back in. Hunting again. Here's the draw out of the shotgun to Rock Preston, trying to pick up the first down. Pooh Bear Williams leading the blocking. 
Now you're in the same situation. You come back after it again with Tremaine Mack. Let's see no, they're, in, they're in a punt safe. Yep. Oh, and he just booms this one. Fair catch is called for and made by Tony Gator. That's a 51-yard kick down at the 7-yard line. From one big rivalry to another, next week we'll be in Birmingham as Peyton Manning leads Tennessee up against the Crimson Tide. The Volunteers are number 10. Alabama is number 16. The battle starts at 7.30 next Saturday night. Birmingham, Alabama. Always a fun place to uh, witness a football game, Mike. Both coming off wins today. That'll be some kind of atmosphere in Birmingham. Crowd trying to get the Seminole defense fired up. Those Miami scrimmages from their own seven. Gator hit in the backfield. Check it, McMillan hit in the backfield. And knocked down by Canel Spain. Spain already has three fumble recoveries this early part of the season. Miami coaches like McMillan, number 28. A young tailback that they think is going to be really special. Clock is down to nine, and that is going to be the final play of this opening quarter. So that's the end of the first quarter with our score, Miami 7 and Florida State 7. Seven and Florida State seven. Ron, to win this game tonight, you need play out of your front four. They need to own the line of scrimmage. So far in this ball game, Miami with five tackles out of the front four and two quarterback pressures having the better of the game. Well, and that hit the, the tackle position particularly because of injury and also youth had been really suspect in early games. But they have played well tonight. Setting in his own end zone. Clement, and he's got a man out there, and he had to catch it out of bounds. Jatiel Green, as the ball just kept drifting on Clement. Florida State on defense likes to cock the two defensive ends and really get pressure from the outside. And they're, they're going to get pressure on Ryan Clement on this play. They're coming from so wide. But he had a lot of time to try to find this receiver down the field, Yatiel Green, but just threw the ball out of bounds. Well, it's a good thing he threw it out of bounds because it would have broken their heart. They have just been called for offensive holding. And uh, it looks like Florida State, though, has declined the penalty. Because of where the ball's at, right. they wouldn't get many yards, so they'll just take the down. So it's going to be a third down. And the line to make to keep this drive alive is out at the 18. Trent Jones, the only setback. Sings it too tall. Green is the man that he wanted. Capers with the cover. Now you got Florida State's got Miami in the same position they had to reverse in to go for the punt block here. Go after him. Go right after him. Got a defensive lineman making the snaps in Denny Fortney, number 99. He's been chasing, playing defense all the time. Go after the punt. Got it away. Not a good kick, but Feaster on the run makes the catch at the 35, at the 25, and it will be first down inside the 23-yard line. Richly on the special team. Excuse me, Ron. Sometimes you don't block the kick, but sometimes when you pressure a kick, you get the same result. You get a low-line drive, and that's exactly what Florida State was able to get out of that punt rush. Mike, as we're watching uh, some of the some of the things going on on the Florida State sideline. The first quarter stats, total yardage, Florida State 116, Miami 50. But the thing that absolutely blows me away, yards passing, Miami 21, Florida State only 30 yards. They have really held the passing game in check. You just figure it's a matter of time till Andre Cooper and E.G. Green become key players in this offense. Miami fake blitz, they stay at home. Swing pass to Gunn. And he will take it to the 18-yard line. Quan Russell makes the stop, and Nick Ward might have been fortunate. He didn't get a, a spearing call there as he put the top of that headgear 
on him on the ground. This is not as easy as it looks for Twan Russell. When you get Warwick done, that's like a pitch out where he's got the ball. But a good tackle by Twan Russell, Russell number 45 in open space. That is difficult. Now pressured out of the pocket. He's going to run. Hit by Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. And it's going to be two yards short of the first down and the 15. You go back to the national championship year. If that would have happened, Charlie Ward would have been in the end zone. And that's the, maybe the big difference in the quarterbacks, Danny Connell. Danny Connell is an excellent thrower, but not a mobile quarterback that's going to run the ball up the field. Ray Lewis, the excellent middle linebacker with a tackle. Let's keep an eye on Messam if they don't run the football because he's 6-4 against that 5-9 corner that Miami has on that side. Throw it over the middle, dropped by the tight end, Pearsall, and I'm not so sure that he didn't get that one tipped just before it got there by Lewis. Ray Lewis with good coverage on Melvin Pearsall. Miami, remember now, they've only had one game in the last four weeks, so they've had a lot of time to prepare for this football game. Two things could happen. One, you could come out sluggish when you haven't played many games and you've had that open date, but I think Miami has really done a nice job in scouting Florida State's film. Well, Bentley to attempt this one from the 22-yard line. His longest of the year is 28. So this one, a 32-yard attempt. And by golly, he missed it. Folks, consider this. That return of a punt came back to the 22-yard line. They had a first and 10, and they come away with nothing. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer. Creating a higher standard. And by Direct TD. Introducing personalized TD. In 1993, Florida State beat Miami and Charlie Ward carried the Seminoles to a national championship. Florida State defeated Nebraska 18-16 in the Orange Bowl, and that gave Bobby Bowden his only national championship. Ron, you, you are exactly right. If you would tell someone that Florida State was going to get the ball on, what, the 20, 22, yard, yard 22 line. yard line and come away empty when they were scoring 70 points a game and averaging 60 points and to come up empty, that was a big win for the Miami defense. As long as this game continues to go and we're tied, more and more confidence for that young Miami football team. Oh, my goodness. Hit in the backfield, and McMillan has no place to go as Wadsworth steps up and knocks him down for the loss. But the defense is saying, okay, guys, we're going to help take over this contest just like we have in years past. A lot of times in the pregame warm-up, you got to watch your players when you're out as a coach. Here's Ray Lewis that was on the field. Scott Bentley was kicking down there, and they were giving him an earful. They asked, actually asked him to leave and go down the other end because you, you, Miami did have that end of the field, but uh, may have rattled him a little bit. Second down at about 13. Play action by Clement goes on top, and he just overthrows him. He had Sae Tucker out there, and a flag is down. I think it's going to be a hold because... Uh, it looked like one of the uh, Miami offensive linemen is going to be caught for holding. Holding on the offense. Miami has had some open receivers. Ryan Clement just a little long in the throws. Also, where they're throwing from right now, Mike, he's got that stiff breeze behind him, so any ball that you try to put a little air under is going to wind up with too much air. And when you're, you're Larry Coker, who's the offensive coordinator for Miami, you do not want to give that ball back to them again on the 23-yard line, so you've got to try to find a way to get a first down. You cannot keep giving Florida State the ball inside the 50-yard line. They're going to eventually make you pay for it. So Florida State's going to turn this uh, holding ball down as well, and it's third down and 13. Clement, by the way, has missed his last five passes. See what they come up with. McMillan is the deep man in the eye behind Carlo Joseph. Pressure coming, and he does the smart thing. You don't want to be a hero when you got Wilson hanging on you or anybody else, and he'll take the sack. That's a wide rush again. Renard Wilson, he's beating the offensive tackle. By widening that bar, you know, the offensive tackle has to get off the ball. 
Here's number 55, Bernard Wilson. See, he just beats the tackle from the start. That's Kerlin Blaze. Kerlin Blaze has to get more depth and try to meet him a little farther back in the offensive backfield. But a wise move by Ryan Clement. Well, let's see if Florida State comes after him again or if they have the return on. Not go after it again. Good snap, and he gets it away. This one trying to turn over, and interference with the receiver right here. That's going to be a penalty against Nathaniel Brooks of the Miami Hurricanes. And you see Butch, he says he got a push from behind. Don't, don't penalize me because my man got pushed into it. what Butch Davis was saying. He got blocked into the man. So we'll take a break. 11.42 left in the first half. We are tied. Tied at seven. Let's go back and look at a replay. Was the head coach's lobby? Was, uh, was he correct or did he just do a good job for his player? Well, that push came 10 yards downfield. Now he does try to miss him right here, but that should have been a five yard uh, penalty for interference of the, uh, of the deep man, Feaster, to catch the ball. Anyway, so penalty was uh, was called off and it'll be a first down at the 46 yard line field position Mike has been very important in this ball game when you consider Florida State getting much the better of it but they have not taken advantage they have not been able to put the points on the board against this Miami defense they're making some good moves out there they're good, doing some good uh, some good defensive calls penalties have hurt Florida State also yeah Tiger with a snap, and they give it to Preston. Preston hit right at the line of scrimmage, and that's Nelson Smith. And again, it is a defensive lineman who stops the play, and in the early ball games for Miami, that has not been the case. Now, with this kind of play out of the defensive lineman, then the linebackers don't have to worry about trying to do too much and do something that takes them out of where they're supposed to be. They're getting good play out of the front four. Front four really is doing a good job against this veteran offensive line of Florida State. Preston out of the backfield. Holds on to the football and is going to be pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Carlos Jones. Been the most successful play for Florida State, just flaring the back. Warwick Dunn or Rock Preston out of the backfield because the linebackers are really trying to work hard underneath the wide receiver, so they're getting depth. And once that ball's dropped off to Rock Preston, then they have to come up and make that open field tackle. Florida State again with the no huddle. 11.06. Left until halftime. Tied at seven first down Seminole. Here's what I'm talking about, Danny Cannell. For 25 seconds, he's looking at the defense. He gets to see exactly what they're in and what they're going to do to it. Direct snap to Preston. Breaks it open up the middle. Cuts it back to the sideline down to the 22-yard line. 13 yards on the play. Just a direct snap to Rock Preston. Trying to control this front four a little bit because of the pass rush. Good block by Clay Scheiber, the offensive center, number 53, and Rock Preston's in the secondary. Dunn back in the ball game. From behind, Kenny Holmes. Ball is loose, and they say incomplete pass. Kenny Holmes, the junior out of Gifford, Florida. They're playing like the Miami front four of old. Kenny Holmes, number 90, working against Jesus Hernandez, number 77. Gives him a little move, then hits Danny Cannell in the back. Stripping the football. Junior defensive end. So it's second down. it complete. That's E.G. Green, and let's check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron, you guys were talking about Miami's defensive line woes. They recruited 10 defensive tackles in 91 and 92, 
Only three are left. Now, Marvin Davis just had knee surgery. Kenny Holmes moved to defensive end. Jay Ina is now the starting right offensive tackle. Four others left the program. One never enrolled to begin with. Warren Sapp, of course, left early to sign with the NFL. And Patrick Riley used up his eligibility and is now playing with the Cleveland Browns. It's the kind of problems that Butch Davis is dealing with. And you can hear the poo-poo as uh, Pooh Bear Williams, number 22, comes into the lineup. But he's a blocker on this play. And Dunn tries to get outside in the speed of Ray Lewis. Nothing there as he'll drop him for a loss and now fourth down. That's why he is one of the best middle linebackers in the country. And his front four is playing well tonight, so he's able to scrape off and make the play against Warwick Dunn. Speed negates speed, and he has a lot of speed at the linebacker spot. So Bentley comes on. He missed the one a moment ago from 32 yards. This one will be from 34. He got this one. So Bentley from uh, the other side of the field, a better angle for a right footer, and he knocks it home, and it's a 10-7 Florida State lead. He hit that one good. Yeah, I mean, hit it, hit it well right off the bat. 10-7, Florida State goes on top. We haven't said a lot about the storm that uh, occurred earlier this week but uh, there certainly were some distractions in this area as far as the kids are concerned but you have to wonder besides the fact that Miami is playing very very well tonight if Bobby did not have the same focus with his kids that uh, that he might have had because mid part of the week everybody was on the telephone trying to call their family and loved ones and make sure that ev that they were doing okay and I think add to that the fact if everybody thought they were an 18 point favorite coming into this ball game sometimes you can take it you start to believe those things you start to believe that you're 18 points better and but you have to prove it on the field and Bobby Bowden tried to get his attention of his team all week he knew he was going to get the best shot of Miami it is a circle the wagon ball game for this hurricane football team. You know, E.G. Green uh, comes from uh, down at the Fort Walton Beach, which is down uh, in the exact area of where the storm came through. He didn't get in touch with his parents for a long time. He was very worried. But uh, I asked him in a practice field on Thursday if he still had a home, and he said, yeah, but some folks around us were not quite as fortunate. Bentley's kick is going to come down at the 7 to Tony Gator. Well, ESPN's coverage of the Senior PGA Tour, the Transamerica, continues tomorrow, 5 o'clock, with the final round. And in the lead, Bruce Summerhays, 9 under par, tied with Trevino, Ben Smith, John Bland. What a story he is out of South Africa. And Walter Morgan at 8 under par. 5 o'clock Eastern Time, final round coverage of the Transamerica. <laughs> 152, Florida State, Miami 42. But the blocked kick has kept the Hurricanes in this football game. Ferguson will get the carry. First one in the line. Gets a lead block and then is hit by Daryl Bush, the sophomore out of Altamont Springs. Daryl Bush, uh, when I talked to Ronnie Cottrell, the linebacker coach, he said his nickname is Death Row because he takes everything so deadly serious. He's a four-point student. He's the key to this defense. He just scrapes outside, makes the tackle on Danielle Ferguson. You know, Mike, he led the team in tackles last year as a freshman. And then he had to have his knee scope just three weeks ago, so they're just getting him back. And you can tell in that replay, he's still a half step behind what he was. September 14th, he had that knee surgery, and he's back here playing tonight against Miami. Well, as you look at number 44, his counterpart there, Todd Rebold, number 48, He's just coming back from an ankle injury. Reminds the coaches of Jack Lambert, Mike Singletary, that that type of player, his eyes into the ball game, he's an emotional guy. But he is the glue that keeps this defense together. McMillan will be the tailback. Third down. Miami needs to take it to the 33 to keep this drive alive. Flag goes down, and on the running play, they are very close to the first down. As Capers comes up to make the stop, and now let's check the marker. Let's see, McMillan, nope, where they're spotting it, he will not have the first. Illegal formation on the offense.
the official coming over to uh, to talk to Butch Davis and tell him about the alignment if it was only six men on the line of scrimmage or who the movement came from. You would think that they would turn it down because according to where it was the run did not pick up the first down. Illegal procedure on the offense. Penalty declined. Fourth down. So what Butch Davis was waiting for before he sent the special teams on was to see if the play had been negated. He didn't want to have the, the kicking team out there if they were going to have to run third down again. Mike Chrissy. And he'll be kicking away to Dee Feaster. Florida State coming after him. This is his best kick of the night. Feaster retreating and makes the fair catch back inside the 25. And there is a flag down at the 23 on the other end. I think it's going to be a first down for the Miami football team. Running into the kicker against the receivers. Well, that was Wadsworth. Number 85, watch him. You got a point that you're going to go to, and you ask your defensive people when they're trying to block kicks, never leave your feet because that's exactly what's going to happen. Andre Wadsworth leaves his feet, runs into the kicker, Mike Chrissy, and keeps the drive alive for Miami. Never leave your feet, Ron. You've always got to be able to go in under control and then try to veer away from the kicker. So Chrissy says, I gave up my body for the team, and we're, now we have a first down. It's 10-7 if you just joined us. Florida State, 7.42 left until halftime. Nobody asked him how he was. They just said, hey, great That's job. Right. Hey, great job, buddy. <laughs> I don't care if you're hurt. Just uh, we got a first down. Two of eight for Ryan Clements, 21 yards. They go with the draw play, and there is nothing there. Daniel Ferguson, as soon as he got the football, was covered up by Wilson, one of the first men through. I think in the last couple series before, we said Miami's defensive front was getting the best of this game. Florida State's defensive front now is really starting to rev it up, and especially Renard Wilson, number 55. Had a big sack a little while ago. Now he's hitting Danielle Ferguson in the backfield. So the front four of Florida State starting to heat it up. Well, Todd Rebol, uh, one of the linebackers, told me yesterday as we visited that he said, you know, hey, it's our time. We've got to step up. We have not played up to our capacity on defense, and we need to pick up the slack. Ferguson breaks the tackle, goes to the 40, and will take it to the 41-yard line. I like the play call by Larry Coker because he's not trying to put the game on Ryan Clemens just yet. Good mix in the offense, not trying to get him in real long situations. Instead, giving the ball to Danielle Ferguson, number one. Sean Hamlet, the safety, who uh, came in this game a little injured tonight. Interesting that both of those safeties, Sean Hamlet and Robert Hammond, both with knee injuries. And as we mentioned, Hamlet will be scoped after this game tomorrow. They swing it out in the flat. That's Gator. Mickey Andrews uh, almost got the, who was the recipient of one of his defensive players' hits. He'd take it, though, because that was pretty good pursuit by his linebackers and his defensive backs to make that play. Byron Capers, number 23, eventually in on the tackle. So Chrissy again comes out to punt. Amazing stat right now, Ron. 54 yards passing by Florida State. Oh. Florida State with the return on and Feaster from the 19. Tried to find a lane. Got a little bit of a crack as he'll take it out to the 30. And that's a 36-yard punt. 11 on the return. Let's take a break. 6.08 left until halftime. Seminoles by three. 10-7 of Florida State by three. Keys tonight. Miami has to rush. They got 34 yards rushing. And the passing yards for Florida State, who would have ever figured in this second quarter they'd only have 54 yards passing? Well, Mike, add this one along with that 34 that uh, the Hurricanes have rushing. In this quarter alone, on six carries, the Hurricanes have three-plus yards, and that's it. Let's see what they can add to that 54 here with 6.08 on the clock. Florida State 
the number one scoring team in the nation had been averaging 59 and a half points a ball game and we have 608 until halftime and they have 10 right now Fullback and just overthrows Dunn. Well, Mike, that's just that's not characteristic. Characteristic of the way he's been playing this year. No, he's he's high on some of his throws on the outside. Nine out of 18, just 54 yards. Cannell has only hit three of his last ten passes. Dunn. Bounces outside on the right, puts a head down, and he will finally be stopped by Tremaine Mack. But it's all the way out at the 44-yard line, and it's a Florida State first down. Well, Danny Cannell looks over the line of scrimmage. What he's trying to figure out is there's six people against my offensive line, and here's what he's got. One, two, three, four, five, six right here. So that becomes a running situation for him because he's got his offensive line, and he's got his fullback, Pooh Bear Williams, so he's got a good match there. And then Ward Dunn sneaking into the secondary. Williams right at the middle, has five, counted off at ten. It'll be another Seminole first down. As Clarence Pooh Bear Williams, who scored earlier tonight, has nine running touchdowns this year. Pooh Bear on a really a quick handoff. He's in the secondary, and uh, we talked about this, Mike Adamley. He eats from the four food groups. I'll let Mike Adamley tell you about that a little later. Let me tell you what Shiver said uh, yesterday, the center. He said he was weighing 296. When we called his number, he said, I can tell you right now, we hit and stayed low because 296 hurts from behind. Mike Adamley, what more do you have? Hey, Coach, it's okay. You could have done it, but basically what he was trying to say is that he was explaining his, his weight as a the reason for it that he eats too much from the four basic food groups. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Burger King, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. The cyber said, if you get stood up by a defensive lineman and he runs into your back, he said, you're in the training room the entire next week. Cannell on top. Oh, what a catch by Mesa. Goes up over the top, and that is that athletic ability. His vertical leap got to be close to 40. Danny Cannell just puts the ball up for grabs. He knows he's got some pretty tall wide receivers. Wayne Messam, six foot four, working against Earl Little at the corner spot. Just put the ball up for grabs, and Wayne jumps up, makes the catch. Pass to the near side, and that is complete to Philip Riley. Here's the catch where he just puts the ball up the alley oop. R.C. Owens alley oop for Wayne Messam, and he makes the catch over Earl Little. Uses that 6 4 frame. And you know, Earl is going to go back and look at that video and say, I couldn't have covered him any better if I had come back and bumped him. It would have been interference. More and more big receivers playing in college football, and you're going to have to recruit some taller defensive backs. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. I've got a tall receiver for you for Southern Cal. Keyshawn Johnson, he's been held in check by Cal in relative terms. Four catches, 52 yards. He's looking for over 100 for the 13th straight game. Right now, the Trojans lead by 12. Thanks, Michael. You know, it, what's a good point as far as cornerbacks? You've got to be a little taller in this day and age. Cooper in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Just turn Carlos Jones around. And finally, he'll hold on the extra point attempt by Bentley. 349 until halftime, and that'll do worlds for this uh, Florida State offense. Is that, that extra point was a little wild, but it was there, and it's 17 to 7. Well, we talked about smaller corners, and I, I wasn't kidding when I said you're going to have to recruit a little taller corners as, as the college football game's changing a little bit with these taller receivers. But this is just, again, the ball's up for grabs. Andre Cooper against Carlos Jones. Andre Cooper just times it right, goes up for the football, and makes the catch against Carlos Jones. 
He's a basketball player recruited here at Florida State. Makes that catch. Pro football, you look at the Michael Irvin and how it's the Dallas Cowboys, the taller receivers, how well they're doing. Harper, you know, the guys with size on the outside, put you in a bind when you get in those one on one situations. So Jones was victimized there. We mentioned that he did not start tonight, but he was victimized last week against BPI. The, the one long pass did not go for a touchdown, but it went to the one foot line. And uh, there was another one that, that was called back that was thrown over the top of him. So the, the coaches know that the ability is there, but you just got to get his head in the ball. Well, they were trying to get his attention by starting Nick Ward, but I think you'll see a little bit more of Nick Ward here as, when they get back on the field because they're going to try to get his attention once again. Bentley's kick into this win. This is going to be returnable by Gator. Across the field, it gets tripped up at the 21-yard line. And Mike Tirico, what do you have this time? Just a reminder that coming up at halftime, as we've been talking about, upset Saturday. Nearly half the top 12 lost today. We'll show you how it happened, and we'll also relive the milestone as Eddie Robinson won game number 400 as a head coach. See you at halftime, Ron. Okay, Michael, we look forward to that. 340 left in this one until halftime, and it's now a 10-point Florida State lead. Coming over the middle and knocked away, and now here comes two flags. That's going to be pass interference called against Florida State. As Troy Saunders, I believe, was holding on to him or put the left hand in his back. Yeah, it looked like contact all the way on the receiver by Saunders. You see number four, pass Saunders, but he's making yeah, a collision yeah. right there with the Teal Green. Just wrapped him up with that uh, left hand around his waist. That changes your strategy a little bit, too, if you're Butch Davis, because now with you add 10 yards onto that, now that's, you got field position that you might want to get down there, even though you've got a young quarterback. It's time now to cut him loose. And you talk about the weapons that Florida State has on offense. Number seven there, Jamie German. And you teal green 87 are two big league receivers. As we mentioned back in the first quarter, Mentioned in the first quarter, 4-2 uh, or just under is what the uh, German was timed at at a camp coming out of high school. So you get a bump and run with him, you better be able to bump big and run fast. Pass in the flat, it is in it. Intercepted and dropped. They're going to say incomplete, but Robert Hammond had just given up his body. That's the only problem with trying to cut it loose with 330 because an interception and another score, you get started in a track meet, but Ryan Clement knows he was eyeing up the receiver too long. Robert Hammond broke on the ball, and he's he's open there for the interception. And for, for those who wonder how Chris C. Jones wound up on the ground, he lost his footing. He was not pushed. McMillan is the lone setback. Clement zings it, has it complete. That's Daphnis right over the middle. And his tight end will take it to the... Where are they going to mark him here? Just across the 40-yard line. As Robert Hammond came up to make the play on him. And let's see, it's going to be third down. And to move the chains, they have to go to the 47-yard line. 306, 305, and counting until halftime. Mike Tirico will be coming up at halftime with a report on what really has been upset Saturday. Some huge surprises around the country in college football. Hit, hit again, and he'll be sacked. That's twice that they've gotten to him, and this one is way back at the 31-yard line. And Shevin Smith is the man who wraps him up, but Boulware is the guy who pressured him out of the pocket. Yeah, Peter Boulware may be the best defensive lineman that's of the pass rush. You see a real wide rush here also again, and the tackle has to get off the line of scrimmage to be able to get to him. 
look at here, he never moves. Something happened on the count. Either it was a silent count, something, the tackle never moved on that play. Never got touched, you're right. Chrissy's kick. Wobbly spiral, but it's a good one. Way back to the 20-yard line as Feaster is backpedaling. And that's a kick of 48 yards. Well, the 1995 college basketball season tips off on Saturday, October the 14th with Midnight Madness. ESPN uh, comes live to you from Maryland, from Virginia and Michigan, and on ESPN2 will be in Kansas, Minnesota, and Mississippi State. Midnight Madness, one week from tonight. You can hear the thumps right now. The round ball is moving. Well, with the average time that Florida State has been taking to score, this is plenty of time for them. As Dunn gets the handoff, little ad living comes to the outside as you see a flag come down, and he will take it to the 32-yard line. Nick Ward finally wrapped him up. I think you're going to get a holding call on Andre Cooper as a wide receiver. Now, he made some real good blocks early, but it looks like he was holding out here on the outside. We'll see. Either that or they're going to call it against the Miami guy for a face mask. Aurora Dunn can make some moves, stop on a dime, and change direction. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense. I think it was on Andre Cooper because he was out here fighting. Aurora Dunn, here's the handoff. Nothing up inside. Now I think I'll go outside. You're going to pick up Andre Cooper, number one, on the outside here. And I think that's the call. Let's see. Yep, right to the face mask by Nick Ward, number 27. He's belting him around there. More punches there and some heavyweight fights. <laughs> and a lot less expensive. So the penalty takes it out to the 47-yard line. First down, Seminoles, 146 until halftime. It'll go to the draw play. Done again. Inside the 45, and he's down to the 42 as Penny Holmes will wrap him up. And we got another flag deep downfield. Same two guys again, Ron. Andre Cooper against Nick Ward. Let's we'll see how it goes this time. <laughs> Here's the play again. Andre Cooper now. He's got into Nick Ward. He's a freshman. Now he's got his goal a little bit. Well, I think this one's going to be on Andre. Good smart move. Oh, Nick says, hey, I can't punch you. I'll wrestle you. Well, Nick obviously played hockey at a time. He was going to pull his jersey over his head there. <laughs> Live ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, replay first down. Now would be a time to go after Nick Ward a little bit. You knock him around a little bit. Now Andre Cooper picks up the penalty. But Make the hit and run a post. <laughs> work on him now with a pass. And you got to admire Nick Ward now. He replaces Carlos Jones. Carlos Jones gets beat on the pass. Now Nick Ward's back in there, and they're challenging him. Pinnell deep in the pocket, and they throw out of that vacated area in the flat again. And Dunn going to be tackled by Ward. Well, they got away. Miami got away with a spearing call here. A late hit on Ward Dunn, but uh, well, they're working on Nick Ward. But you got to admire, admire the job he's doing tonight as a true freshman against these receivers. About to go under one minute until halftime. Canal, same side of the field, and they have it complete to mess him. It'll be a Florida State first down. Earl Little trying to cover on the play. Tough to get to Danny Cannell because of the shotgun and the depth he's at. Experienced offensive line, and he throws so quickly on time. Tough to blitz him, tough to get after him. Draw play again. Rock Preston, wow, good play at the line of scrimmage as he is knocked down by Fortney. Well, coming up next in the GMAC halftime report, shocking upsets. Kansas, Colorado will have Virginia, North Carolina, and Northwestern and Michigan. And a timeout is called by Florida State. So we'll take it with them. We'll be right back. 52 ticks left until halftime. Florida State by 10. Total yards, Florida State 264, Miami 54. But FSU only leading by 10, but the next 52 seconds is key in this ball game. Yeah. 
Here comes the blitz. Deep in the middle. You can see it right over the middle. E.G. Green, and he's going to take it down for the first down at the 26-yard line. Juan Russell, I just talking about blitz and uh, Danny Cannell, how you have to give it some time, but you're going to see number 45 come into the picture. But Danny Cannell has so much time, he's never really going to get to him. See him come in there, did your picture came from too far back. Cannell going to go on top, right side. Cooper wide open at the three. He'll walk in. Well, all of a sudden, the cat and mouse game, Nick ran into a tiger. You figure <laughs> he turned from a tiger yeah, yeah, to, from a not cat an alley to a tiger. Cat anymore, no. Well, Nick Ward, in fairness to him now, he's a true freshman playing. He didn't get any help over the top. You figure it's just a matter of time till they work Cooper against Nick Ward, but they get the touchdown with 33 seconds left. Dudley knocks it right down the middle. Andre Cooper is a very, very tough receiver. Now, he should have help over the top. That's Nick Ward. He's sinking a little bit, but you're going to see a defensive back come into the picture there. Looked like Tremaine Mack a little bit too late. So he was looking for help? He, right he had saw. help all the way. He was sinking in too deep coverage, but he did a not, not a very good job there, and it was number three, Tremaine Mack. Had to get over the top. Pinnell has hit his last seven passes, including two touchdowns. So all of a sudden, that the Rocky started, and when, with him getting hot, 24 to 7. Now. And now look at the passing yardage. We, we circled it with six minutes to go in the half. It's 54 yards. Now you look up there, it's 137. So we've done a lot of damage here in the last six minutes. Discussing with his teammates the situation. Carlos Jones, of course, is number 12, and he's the man that he uh, is replacing when he goes in the ball game. And I'm sure asking him about the, the circumstance and you know, did I turn him loose too soon or what happened? No, the way he played it, he was sinking, doing the right thing. No one was threatening him in his zone there, but he had to have help over the top. Tremaine Mack, as you look at Danny Cannell, numbers now. He talked about that sick feeling last year. He's got a pretty good feeling in his stomach tonight. This is Gator. And he'll step out of bounds. Mike Tirico, let's uh, go back to you quickly. Ron, you mentioned the hurricane that came through the area. The Thursday night game forced back to Saturday. Auburn still played very well. Stephen Davis, first game over 100. 162 yards, and Terry Bowden's home watching his dad with a smile. Today, Terry won by 28. So a big victory for Auburn a couple of days after they thought it was going to happen, but uh, they still got it. I think bigger also is the fact Arkansas down and uh, also LSU. Clement going to go on top. Too far. And even if Jatiel Green had caught it, I have a feeling that the flags would have come out because he just ran over Shevin Smith. He just <laughs> ran up his back and shoved him down, the defensive back. Just a little bit again too long by Ryan Clement. Very well covered. 30 yards passing for the young sophomore here in this ball game. Mike, you, you talk about weapons, and Yatiel Green, of course, is, is their guy they like to go to. Against BPI, he had eight catches for 171 yards in that ball game. I think he had four over 35 yards against Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. This is a handoff on the delay to Gator. Breaks it up the middle, gets off one tackler, and then he will finally be stopped for the first down at the 47. Miami's still got three timeouts, so they're going to use one of theirs right now. This is Scott Covington, number 11, the backup quarterback. When I visited Miami just before the season started, and uh, watch some practice tape with Larry Coker. This is a very talented quarterback also, Scott Covington. So they've got two young quarterbacks in Ryan Clement, who's done a nice job tonight, still hasn't been able to find the mark throwing the football consistently, but Covington could come off the bench too. He's very talented also, Ron. You really liked him, didn't you? I remember we talked and you said that, you know, thought 
that, that was going to wind up being a heck of a battle between uh, him and, and Clement. I really thought it could have been Covington in, uh, in this position, but uh, Clement has more experience. Covington was hurt in the spring. Of course, Ryan Collins got hurt at the beginning of the year as the starting quarterback, so uh, that gave way for Ryan Clement. But Scott Covington missed spring practice with surgery, so he's a little bit behind. Nice. Ryan Collins. Number eight. Well, the interesting thing in talking with uh, with Butch yesterday is the bottom line is we keep talking about the youth on this Miami football team, but 69 of the 75 scholarship players will be back next year. Thirteen seconds left until halftime. Butch Davis looking on anxiously. His club down all of a sudden by 17 points. Wilson with the pressure gets it out to Gator in the flat. You can see how quick he is, and he'll uh, step out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Six seconds to go, Ron. You just got to hang one up here. Throw it down the football field. Casey Jones and Canel Spain had uh, had some extended conversations after the last three plays. 63 white and uh, 96 in the garnet and gold. Well, you recruit against these guys. Florida State recruits against Miami and, of course, the University of Florida down here. There's a lot of competition all throughout the year between these two schools. I'll tell you what happens when you get that wide rush. Number 79, Curlin Blaze, is just starting out a little bit too early to try to get back. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Remain second down. See, a wide rush is forcing you, forcing those tackles. They've got to get off the ball. Now, the left tackle here, 79, standing up. He knows that wide rush is, is coming right here. So he's got to be able to try to get off that ball to, to get to that defensive end. Back up, but he's a little bit too early. That was 58 bull there. Clement going on top, and it's going to be intercepted by Samari Roy. So that's the end of the first half with the score. Florida State 24, Miami 7. And now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC Halftime Report. Okay, Ron, so the... So about to start the third quarter, Seminoles 24 to 7. And Mike Godfrey, I guess my question to you is, with that outburst in the second quarter, uh, have the Seminoles postured themselves for a blowout here tonight? I think they have, Ron. With six minutes to go uh, in the second half, they just took over the ball game. And Miami only had 19 total yards in offense in the second half. So Florida State's defense is really what's turned it around. Let's go down to the uh, sideline. And Mike Adam Lee, who's uh, visiting with Miami's head coach, Butch Davis. Butch, how do you get more offensive productivity in the second half? Now, first of all, we've got to do a better job of mixing the plays. We've got into way too much of a rhythm of trying to play conservative, keep the game close. They allowed them to, to play a great deal of run blitz and, and, and gang up on us in first down. we got to do a better job there of creating some things on first down. we got to make some first downs and, and have some offensive productivity. Okay, good luck, Coach. Well, as we look down on the sideline uh, and take a look at the halftime stats as uh, Ryan Clement is warming up, what do you see, Mike? I think the key, Ron, is rushing yardage. I said that was going to be a key 37 yards, only 32 yards passing, and then 0 for 8 on third down right here. So uh, just a, a terrible job offensively, but credit Florida State's defense. I think the Florida State defense is really what's turned this around. But 0 for 8 on third downs, you don't move the chains and you don't keep Danny Cannell Ward done off the field. Yeah, the, the Florida State defense did intensify considerably in that uh, second quarter, and as a result, the, the offense took a big step forward. Danielle Ferguson, number one, looking out of the field as uh, Florida State gets to start it off here. They won the opening toss and deferred to the second half. We were tied at seven at the end of the first quarter, but then in the second quarter, 17 unanswered points by the Seminoles. Rock Preston, back deep. Good will kick it off also. D. Feaster is back with Preston. 
He's going to let this one go. It uh, will go out of bounds. By the way, at the end of the first half, you saw the crowded miss right in front of Florida State's uh, sideline to answer, was there a penalty? Yes, there were offsetting penalties for shoving uh, and, and pushing and also uh, talk going back between the two teams. So it was offsetting. And uh, that's the reason we're starting with no penalties in this third quarter. Well, Danny Cannell got red hot there with uh, six minutes to go. He had 54 yards pass, and now he has 147. So they found a little bit of a mix in their game. The draw play to Warwick Dunn has opened up the passing game. And really good to balance also with 155 yards rushing and 147 passing. Dunn bounces it outside. 10, 15, 20. He's off to the races. Can they catch him? One man. Yes, Tremaine Mack. Find it. Will push him out of bounds at the 22-yard line. It's a run of 43 yards. When you see a back take the ball into the short side of the field like that and get that big a play, you've got to find a wide receiver that blocks. Wayne Messam, 89, is going to be outside here blocking on Earl Little. You're going to see him just turn Earl Little to the outside. There's the block by 89. That opened it up wide for Ward Dunn. Who there, Williams, straight ahead, breaks tackle after tackle, and he will have it all the way to the 11. Mike, the other thing, it looked as old as, well, go ahead with the run shot. Well, I think the most, the successful thing for them, for Florida State's been the draw play inside until that last play where Ward Dunn was able to get outside. It also looked as though that corner had come up to bump, and when you start doing that, you turn your back on the play, which allowed Dunn to get a head of steam down the field. And the track meet's about ready to begin here if they don't stop him or get the ball turned over here. Clarence Pubel Williams takes it into left tackle for no game. Mike Adamley, let's check back with you. You know, everybody knows that Warwick Dunn is fast speed, not a problem for him. The thing that really makes him tough is the fact that he's only 5'9", and he runs low to the ground. Mike, it kind of reminds me of those old Kansas City Chief days that Hank Stram had with Mike Garrett and Warren McVay. He's obscured by their offensive linemen. By the time the defense sees him, he's gone. And he, and he doesn't seem like he's running, but he's making a lot of yards. Shame just to get away from the linebacker or a little. The corner comes over to make the tackle on him. And that's eight tackles we have unofficially for Little. One of the interesting things about Warwick Dunn, he's a quarterback out of high school, and he was one of the four fastest time track athletes that Florida State was recruiting. But Florida State recruited him. They really recruited him to play cornerback because they thought he was such had such great speed as you see him outside here. But when he got here, he went to Bobby Bowden, and he said, listen, I want to be a running back. And of course, Bobby Bowden has never regretted that decision. <laughs> You can hear the crowd reacting, looking for Kubera Williams. He's already scored one tonight, which gave him nine on the year. But instead, he goes with the small back, and Lewis will make the tackle. They don't get it into the end zone, but it's only about a half yard away, if that much. You know you got a good football team when Kubera Williams can come in in short yardage and, and usually carry the ball into the touchdowns. And Warwick Dunn does not mind that because he, he just wants to win. So it doesn't matter who scores the touchdown, but... Everybody in the stand is yelling Pooh Bear here tonight, so you probably figure it's going to be him. They'll probably give it to Warwick. And it's, it's done. Touchdown. I think the route's on, Ron. Florida State's offensive line has taken this game over here. Bentley with the extra point attempt, trying to make it a 31 to 7 ball game. Miami needs something in a hurry here. The track meets the gun. Ward Dunn getting into the end zone. Followed a block by Pooh Bear Williams. Well, he scores the touchdown, and he also has put himself in the record books tonight with five consecutive 100-yard games. That sets a new Florida State record. When you're looking at the offensive line, they don't even look like they're sweating. Well, one of the things also that Shiver talked about yesterday, Clay Shiver, the offensive center, who is so highly touted uh, by the pro scouts, he talked in terms of the depth. And he said, you know, our number twos, the guys that play behind us, 
the coaches have the utmost confidence in putting them in the ball game, which, uh, which helps us because we stay fresher longer. And of course, this team's been scoring so many points. Number twos have played a lot. Well, they do. They play a lot, and they get a lot of experience. And Bobby Bob's one of the coaches who started playing his second team guys early in the ball game to give them more depth as the season rolls on. Well, Bobby. You don't see the same wrinkles in his face that you saw in that first quarter, do you? No, he's loosened up a little bit. <laughs> Tightness is gone. After that blocked kick and Miami tied it at seven apiece, Bobby was working on that gum and pacing pretty hard. <laughs> Big kickoff return will return those wrinkles off. <laughs> That's Gator standing. Uh, and he's capable. Yeah, he is. Well, he got under this one. Got to be short. And it'll come down to Trent Jones at the 14. This one here is also capable as he'll take it to the 33. Next Saturday, ESPN2 gives you a complete day of college football coverage. At 1, Alex Smith and Indiana clash with Iowa. At 5, catch all the plays on Sports Night, the college football edition. On a lot of good backs in the Big Ten, but I'll tell you, the best one may be that kid from Minnesota, Chris Darkins. We saw him on TV a couple weeks ago against Syracuse. Is he good? And he's one that, like, you know, he's not getting a lot of attention either. He is in that part of the world, but not as far as the entire country. Ferguson is going to take it up around the 40-yard line. Sean Hamlet from that safety spot will tackle him, but it's a gain of six. Daniel Ferguson is so deep in the back that he might be nine yards deep, his heels at nine yards. When they get the ball back to him, he has to run a long way to get to the line of scrimmage. But they like him deep to get the ball deep to him so he can cut back and see the holes as he gets the football. Ferguson again. You can see it doesn't take very much. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron Cal has not packed their bags against Southern Cal in Berkeley tonight. Niall Benjamin, who led the Pac-10 in punt returns last year, a great run finding the seam 56 yard score they go for two and miss so they need two possessions to try to win this game so the Bears uh, saying let's, let's wake up here it's not time to take that hiatus yet our situation is they are stretching the chains down on the sideline and it is just short so it'll be third down Mercier right there. We talked about him in the first half, Mike. We were talking about good running backs in the Big Ten. Mercier went to a prep school after he graduated from high school in Montreal. And the school that he went to is the one that produced Bianca Batuga. He went there. Also, you remember Heishamel Mastud, who played guard for Arizona and is playing with the Oilers right now. Same school. So that place has been a pipeline for good players. It's easy for you to say. But there's a lot of good players come out of Canada into the into the college ranks. College coaches always will go up there and find some good players. And when I was in Arizona, we found a kid named Chris Schultz who played in the Canadian League for a long time. See those linebackers creeping up in the third and short. It's Daphnis in motion. And more and more this is happening uh, as Miami's getting a little frustrated with, uh, with what's happening. Dead ball foul, ball start on the offense. Well, as I mentioned back at the first half also, uh, Mercier, really interesting in the fact that at his size at 6'4", 274, he's a trick skier. He was one of the best young skiers in all of Canada. Speaks fluent uh, French, besides speaking English, but he said he does miss the skiing. He likes the warm weather with Miami. He's going to have to do some good blocking right here as Tony Gator comes in with own setback. But it is with a five-yard penalty, third down and six for the Kings. Gator in the draw play. Tries to get it outside, and he's going to have the first down, I believe. Yeah. At the 44-yard line, Todd Rebol finally locked him up. Good block by Jamie German, the wide receiver for Miami. And Bobby Bobbin, when he talks about this football team, knows he's going to have to get better effort out of his defense than he has early in the season to be a national contender to win it all. Here, Gator, number 22, follows the block of German for the first down. 
close to the first down. Mickey Andrews, defensive coordinator, is looking for something to rally his defense around. This kind of performance tonight could be that, where they grow in confidence. I asked him on, on Thursday at the practice field, so Mickey, you kind of pulling your hair out, aren't you? And he said, I didn't have much left to pull out, but yeah. It's, uh, it's been one of those things where, as we mentioned, they thought they were going to have seven back, and then two went into the pros. Uh, as you look at the number of the ranking of the Florida State defense. Yeah, 76th in the country in rushing defense. That's not typical of Florida State's defensive teams, but uh, I think they're getting a lot of good play out of their front four tonight, and they'll gain confidence in this game. Pass caught. He kept the foot in bounds. That's the best throw tonight that Ryan Clement has made. He threw it on time to Jermaine Chambers, who got a pretty good cushion on the outside for the completion. So uh, a nice throw by Ryan Clement. So they spotted at the 42-yard line, and I think you could detect in our interview with Butch Davis that the Mike Adamley did with him, and he was really kind of upset with and frustrated himself with the offense. Well, he the talked about half. the conservative play calling, but I think that's what they had to do in this ball game. They were playing it close until that mark there late in the second quarter. They just kind of just kind of got away from it. McMillan takes it to the 38. So you can hear the wind in our microphones up here as it seems to be picking up a little bit. Looks like the southwest that it's blowing out of. Ferguson comes back into the backfield, replacing McMillan at tailback. Counter Trey hit in the backfield, and Coward is there. Wilson in the vicinity, and a slow developing play goes either side of the football is sometimes hard to work against this kind of well clip. against the, you're right against the speed defense and especially with Renard Wilson getting up field so far the outside defensive ends again let's just watch him here come from the outside again they stop the counter because they're able to get up the field you see Wilson take on the block of the guard now force it outside to court number 56 that's exactly what they wanted to do so it's third down and they need the 32 yard line You almost think two downs here, Ron, because you're going you run out of here if you don't get points this time. Three-step drop, going to go up on top. And incomplete. Chambers caught it out of bounds, or couldn't hold on to it out of bounds. I think you go for it here on fourth down. you got to get something to happen here. Positive for you. That was the same type of play there that is, is a two-deep coverage is that Andre Cooper scored on. Good coverage right here. Byron Capers, number 23. And for those of you who said, well, he was face masking, you actually can do that in college. You just can't bump him until the ball gets there. Fourth down. Proud East standing. Got it. Complete. Yatil Green at the 21-yard line. Got to get those chains moving. They were 0 for 8 and third downs in that first half. And they've got to have something positive happening. Ryan Clement with a very good throw here to Yatil Green. And Butch Davis just challenging his football team. He knows he's still got a long season to go here. And the Big East is winnable yet if they can get back in that race. So he needs good things to happen for his quarterback and his football team tonight to build on. We go back to the two-back set. Derek Harris, the fullback. McMillan in a tailback. And Mack will take it into the boundary. And boy, he gets tagged and tagged again. Hamlet, the first man there to get to him, and they're going to give him progress to the 19. Got a good block from Derek Harris, the fullback, who hardly ever carries the ball from Miami. Coming into the night, he hadn't had a carry as the starting fullback, but he's a former linebacker, former tight end, and he's there for one purpose, to block for that tailback. I think this is Daphnis, the tight end, who is injured on the play. He's up, hobbles off the field. <laughs> Number 
9.04 to play, third quarter. Florida State, 31, Miami, 7. Frank Clements' grandmother said she wasn't going to watch the ball game tonight. I think she's kind of probably sneaking in watching this tonight, don't you think? <laughs> I hope she is. real proud of Ryan Clements, but she said since the start, he's going to start against Florida State, I'm not going to watch the game. A little nervous. Sean Hamlet also was injured on the play for Florida State, and he had to come off on the near side. Second down, King. Gets this one off quickly, and because of the hit, the ball comes loose. Robert Hammond put the wood on Chris C. Jones, and let's check with Mike Tirico on the baseball playoffs. Mike? Yes, Ron, the place that stole that tomahawk chop. They were chopping a lot tonight. Fred McGriff, part of a four-run bottom of the third for Atlanta, erasing a three-run top of the third. Braves win the series. They open the LCS at Cincy on Tuesday. Okay, Michael, Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley from Tallahassee, Bill Campbell Stadium, 31-7 with 8.46 left to play third quarter. Butch Davis with his first trip in here as head coach against Florida State. Of course, he came up here when he was on the staff of Jimmy Johnson. Incomplete. Now, here's a flag late, but not down in the secondary. It is behind the quarterback. The referee threw this one. Might get James Cozy for hitting the quarterback a little bit late. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Florida State came with a blitz on the outside. Brought both outside corners. Cozy number 20. There's the late hit on Ryan Clement. Well, the officials are going to keep a real close eye on this one. We can't let it get out of hand. And that's the reason that the Terry Monk threw that flag just now. Because right at the end of the first half, it got real volatile. And now a timeout has been called. And Florida State calls it. We'll take the break. We'll be right back. And by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Well, Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders, just two of the incredible 52 players for the 1987 game that went on to play in the NFL. Miami won a 26-25. It went on to win a national championship led by Jimmy Johnson and Butch Davis. And I have a feeling that Jimmy probably has uh, been watching this game off and on at least tonight to see how his uh, former protege is, is getting along here at uh, Tallahassee. Right now, it's 31-7, Florida State. But the Hurricanes are driving. McMillan, run it back into the boundary, gets by the first tackler, but will not get by Robert Hammond. Florida State jumped into a 5-3 defense, an eight-man front, trying to stop McMillan on the run. The good, very good pursuit out of the secondary, and that Robert Hammond, number six, with the tackle. And you can see Canal Spain coming in and bumping into, uh, into Hammond. He was there to help him. Ferguson back in the ball game at tailback. He gets the handoff. Boy, just another of many hits both sides of the football tonight. Julian Pittman, number 95. He's out of Niceville. He was another of the youngsters that was very concerned about his family. That's down in the area where the storm came through. And Florida State has a player shaken up. Well, here's the storyline in our game so far. Cannell and Dunn, it's been their night. When you look at 367 yards, Cannell passing for 147, two touchdowns, and Dunn, 16 rushes, 151 yards, one timeout, or one touchdown. And they've just said a timeout, so let's take it. 819 left in the third. 31-7 Florida State at the 819 mark of the third quarter. 
situation. Third down for the Hurricanes, and the ball resting just outside the eight. Got it right up in the middle, Jamie German, and he's going to be stopped inside the four. You need touchdowns here, Ron. Keep up with this offense. So it's a fourth down and goal, and it looks as though the field goal unit is coming on. 21, Dane Pruitt. going to be put down at the 10-yard line and Butch Davis will go for the field goal with a fourth down and goal from the three. And he gets a good one. So we'll hold it right here with 7-12 to play in the third quarter and it's now Florida State 31-10. to That's a good drive by Miami and especially for Ryan Clement, the quarterback, to get a little confidence but you really have to get sevens against Florida State. You can't afford to get threes. That was a confidence builder for that young man. Well, ESPN's coverage of the Senior PGA Tour, the Transamerica, continues tomorrow at 5 o'clock with the final round. And in the lead, look at this time. Summer Hayes, Trevino, Smith, and Bland at 9-under. Walter Morgan at 8-under par. So look for Jim Kelly and company tomorrow. Final round coverage. 5 o'clock Eastern time, the Transamerica. <laughs> Preston and Dee Feaster deploying. But they are not all the way back to the goal line as uh, Florida State puts the good hands group up just across the 50-yard line, and they are anticipating that Miami might try an onside kick here. Kicks it away. And because of the wind, Preston able to nestle under this one at the three. Mike Adamley, let's check back with you. Well, there he is, Florida State's little big man, Warwick Dunn. He sets his school record tonight with his fifth straight 100-yard rushing game. He came in tied with Sammy Smith. This is how he did it. He bounces outside and then turns on the Jets. But that's only one of the things that makes him a very special running back. He's also tough, too. Bobby Bowden probably doesn't like them to see this, but when it calls for it, the situation, he can bang it in as well. Warwick Dunn, I love this guy. 5'9", 178. Bobby doesn't want him to touch the ball any more than about 25 times. They're worried about him getting hurt, but he wants to. He loves it. Does it have any... I know you love him as a football player, but how tall are you, Mike, when you play? 5'9", 197. Uh, there it is. Right, <laughs> right you got it. Like yeah, so I, I, lo I love Rock Preston. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Mike Adam Lee, of course, an excellent running back from Northwestern. Yeah, I started to say that's uh, for all the folks who went to Northwestern and Mike Adam Lee. My phone rang just as that uh, ball game was official, and I picked it up and said, Hi, Mike, how are you? Either him or Adrian Carson, <laughs> right? Did, yeah, I knew that Adrian was there doing the game, so he wasn't calling yet. Hubert Williams with the carry, and Denny Fortney uh, comes up to make the stop. You know, back to uh, to Warwick. In talking with him on the practice field the other day, this young man, the really important thing to him, he, he obviously wants to be a good football player, and he is that, but his books are really important to him as well, and he's gone to summer school every year so that he can stay ahead, and he told me he's taking 17 hours this semester. Computer science major. 10, 15, 20, off to the races again. And finally pushed out of bounds down here at the 36-yard line. Tremaine Mack, the first man to get to him. He had a 43 a minute ago. Now he rattles off a 37. Well, Mike Adamley's favorite running back here. Warwick Dunn's going to pop again. Gets a good block from Aaron Deli on number seven, the wide receiver, and into the secondary again. Rock 
Preston. Preston gives him a breather, but they go with Williams, and he takes it straight ahead for three, maybe four. Lang there to wrap him up. Ron, Florida State said a, had a special meeting after two days this year, and their offense said, we want to break all the offensive records of the 1993 national champs. They want to average 46 points a game and 550 yards of offense. And there's the comparison, and they're on track tonight. Preston. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Well, Ron, Mr. Dunn's put up some impressive numbers, but he's got a way to go to catch Chris Darkins of Minnesota. Best rushing performance in college football today. 260 yards and three touchdowns, but Purdue is answering in this score fest. Rick Trefsker's touchdown run as the Boilermakers ahead of Minnesota by seven in the fourth. Okay, Mike, thank you. That's the young man that uh, Coach Godfrey was talking about. As Kubert takes it off the left side this time, and he gets down to the 19-yard line. Lewis was the man at the bottom of the stack, and, and when Williams at... <laughs> 280 plus carries the ball. It's not always the best place to be at the bottom of the pile when you stop him. Preston hit in the backfield. That's a nice job by Courtney. Number 99. This is what I was talking about a little while ago when we, when we were talking about going for three or seven because this team's so explosive on offense that they're right back knocking on the door again for seven, or they can negate your three real quick if they make the field goal. So tough to settle for field goals against this team. Swings it out to Preston and knocked down by Kenny Holmes at the line of scrimmage. Kenny Holmes has really had a good evening tonight for Miami's defense. Really has set himself up to help this defense with some good plays, good pass rush, and hands up right here deflecting the Danny Cannell pass. So it means Bentley will come on to attempt. Let's see, Cannell is going to put it down at the just short of the 30-yard line, so let's call it a 40-yard attempt. Miami needs a block here big time. And Miami has called a timeout, so we'll take it with them. 4.09 left to play, third quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pull out your Tribe magazine and see if you're a winner in tonight's Seminole Sweeps. 31-10, Florida State trying to make it a 24-point lead. Ray Lewis in the middle. He's on its way, plenty of distance, and he is wide right. No good. That's not a part of the game that's going to satisfy Bobby Bowden tonight. Two missed field goals. From one big rivalry to another, next week we'll be in Birmingham as Peyton Manning leads Tennessee up against the Crimson Tide. The Volunteers are number 10. Alabama is number 16. The battle starts at 7.30 next Saturday night. Mike, it, as, as good as his ball clubs have been, what is it about field goal kicking here at Florida State? It has, it been, it's really been erratic time to time. And they were able to go out and recruit the best kicker, supposedly, coming out of high school football that year in Bentley. Just hasn't been consistent. Baptist in motion. Pass is complete. That's German. Jamie German, and he'll have the first down out at the 37. Jamie German. Stop is made by number 26. One of three, one that he hit, 34 yards. It's encouraging second half from Butch Davis for Ryan Clement because he's looked like an entirely different quarterback here in the second half. Much more confidence in what he's doing. Middle has seen a lot of action tonight. He's back in the ball game now. Gets the handoff and uh, takes it straight ahead. His bodies still come crashing in. And let's check back with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Ron, you guys just whetted our appetite for Tennessee, Alabama next week. Bama won by 16 today. 
Tennessee by 18. Peyton Manning, 35 of 46, 384 yards. His touchdown pass to Joey Kent, one of his four against Arkansas. And Peyton Manning may be the best young quarterback at dissecting defenses. I mean, he really is, is smart, and he works hard at it. He understands game tapes and everything. He is knowledgeable when he goes on the scrimmage. Quick study. Pressure as the ball has gotten away, but uh, nobody's close. And the reason is because Capers was just tackling the teal green. Wadsworth is the man who was coming after Clement and put him to the ground just as he threw it. See the pressure from the left side on Ryan Clement. Stands right in there. Andre Wadsworth and a pressure. Here's Yatiel Green, number 87, working against Capers. A lot of contact both ways there, Ron, but of course it's going to go against Florida State. So the penalty puts it at the 43-yard line, the 43 of Florida State. the line of scrimmage here, which is no place to go. Coward is the man at the bottom of the pile. McMillan hit very hard, and all of a sudden was going the other direction. Just not any movement in the offensive line on the Miami defense. You see McMillan get the handoff, but there's no place to run. He just runs into the pile of his offensive lineman, Curlin Blaze, number 79, who gets stood up by Arpheus Roy. to go under two minutes in our third quarter. He didn't get the playoff. No, sure didn't. You could see that 25-second clock going down. And from the pattern that was run, Chambers was going to go on a post. Dead ball foul to live game on the offense. Remains second down. We're seeing a different quarterback in this second half. Here's your quarterback of the future of Miami right now. Look, maybe, maybe get a look at Scott Covington maybe in the fourth quarter, but Ryan Clement is going to take him through that Big East schedule. German. Gets by one tackler, and he'll take it within two yards of the first down at the 35 as Shevin Smith is there to put the stop on him. We were talking with Chuck Amato the other day, one of the defensive coaches here at Florida State, as Jamie German's coming across the middle, makes the catch, and then runs close to the first down. But he was talking about a gathering that they had down in West Palm Beach, Florida. They had coaches talk three coaches talk and all of a sudden Miami Ryan Clement stood up 19 year old he said he gave a real good speech for 15 minutes and he, he knew then with that confidence that he was going to be a pretty good quarterback for Miami third down and two ball is fumbled Florida State has fallen on the football is it a no play or not Howard is on the ball Dead ball foul against the offense. Ball snap. It'll remain third down. Looks like some movement in Florida State's defensive line. They tried to snap the ball. And we're moving. So clock runs. We are under one minute to play third quarter. Florida State came out and uh, got quick, quick points in the third quarter. Now Miami trying to answer again after kicking the field goal. Clement, near side, intercepted, but it's out of bounds. Samari Roll came down with it, but he was well beyond the side boundary. 
good coverage by Samari Rowe. He's in great shape there against Omar Rowe, number nine. So Rowe going against Rowe. It's, uh, but they're, they're not related. See if, if, well, anyway. if one of these clubs had, uh, had, re had recruited a guy named Tide, then you'd have Roll Tide Roll. <laughs> Trying to get in that promotion in the game next week. That's huh? exactly right. That's who you'll see next week. Florida State sneaking up in the blitz. Clemen got to be hit, and he is sacked back at the 48-yard line. Wilson. Spain was so excited he threw his own teammates down. And there's Mickey right in the middle of it. Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator. Bernard Wilson again getting a good start. Goes inside to get a good little movement. Little stun on there with Corn Connell Spain. And he came outside. Renard Wilson went inside, was not blocked, got right to Ryan Clement. You also could see that. Actually, quarterback kind of ran into the defender as Mercier appeared to have a little bit of a lock on him. Couldn't do it, though. Give Florida State great field position. Preston cuts it back inside. And unless we got a whistle to stop it, that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. Florida State leading by 21 as we uh, go into this fourth quarter. And a couple of numbers through the first 45 minutes of play. Miami, as far as rushing, 27 attempts, 54 yards for a two-even per carry average. Florida State, 38 carries, 273 yards. They're averaging 7.2 every time they run the football. And here's the man who has done the biggest amount of damage and done, I believe, tripped over his own offensive lineman. Until that carry, Warwick had 18 uh, attempts, 186 for an average of 10.3. Well, they come out of the uh, the shotgun. We go into center and it's done. And he's going to throw the ball and the ball comes off his hand. And I'll tell you, if Jesus Hernandez didn't knock it away, that might have been picked off by Miami. Jesus Hernandez looked like was the intended receiver on this play. It just slipped out of Warwick Dunn's hands. Well, you can't use rosin anymore. He doesn't have gloves on, does he? Here's the pitch, and Warwick Dunn did a nice job. He didn't show it. looked like run all the way, and then all of a sudden he raises up the throw, and the ball just slips right out of his hand like a shot put. Oh, my. Boy, he doesn't want to see his teammates in team meeting next week. Let's just blast this one all the way to the end zone line for a touchback. That is a 49-yard punt. Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. You know, Ron and Mike, possible sanctions by the NCAA still hang over the Miami and Florida State football programs. Both still schools are unsure as to when they'll go before the NCAA's Committee on Infractions. I talked to uh, Florida State Athletic Director Dave Hart tonight about it. You know, it's left both coaches in limbo. Bobby Bowden and Butch Davis are ready to accept whatever the NCAA deals out, but they'd like to make them, like the NCAA, have them make a decision soon because the biggest problem they're facing right now is recruiting. You know, Mike, in fact, there are 200 recruits here tonight, the most Florida State's ever had in a ball game before. Ferguson breaks it off the left side, and he'll take it all the way to the 30-yard line. Well, we've talked about the problems with the NCAA. They just take too long. I mean, it's, it's one organization, but they ought to have different locations and let people make decisions on these things a little bit quicker because it does affect recruiting. It does uh, people use it against you. Another 
gust of wind coming through uh, up here as it continues to pick up. And now a timeout is going to be called and taken by Miami, so we'll take it with it. ESPN's presentation of CFA Primetime is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. And by American Honda, celebrating their 25th anniversary of selling cars in America. Warwick Dunn scoring that touchdown. Uh, well, actually, he doesn't get in right there, but 184 yards for him tonight. That is a career high. As he did score on a similar play in the first half. Miami took the timeout. They have but one remaining. 31 to 10. Miami trailing Florida State for the first down of the 30. On its pass, picked off. Colsey. Ron James Colsey just read that play and just sat in waiting. And not a real strong throw by Ryan Clemens. James Colsey just looked at Ryan Clemens' eyes, read it. Just watch number 20. He's reading the eyes. Now he goes off the receiver. Now he breaks on the ball. He's right there for the interception. Moved right in front of Omar Roll for the big pick. by the Florida State defense tonight that held Miami to 64 yards rushing. And that was, the, I think, the key for Miami. They had to run the football successfully. Well, they also have held the Miami defense out of the end zone. The touchdown was a special teams touchdown. 10 of 23 for Ryan, 96 yards, two intercepts. tell by the eyes of the defender that that he stared at him long and hard too long he knew that play was coming James Cozy broke on that football that's right, that's right. good interception good position good break this may be the last series for Danny Cannell we may see Thad Busby who's a very impressive young quarterback well, up on top for the end zone Riley what a catch for the touchdown Sometimes when you get benched, Ron, you lose a little confidence also. It can be a wake-up call, but it can also be a lost confidence call. And Carlos Jones was behind Philip Riley, and I don't know if he ever saw the football. Because he sure didn't break up on it. Bentley gets the extra point, and we'll take a timeout with our new score, Florida State 38 and Miami 10. What a difference a year makes. Danny Cannell last year threw three interceptions. Now this year there's a three and it has touchdowns. Well, he said last year he had a sick feeling when he left that stadium in Miami after that loss, but he makes up with it tonight with his jump ball to Andre Cooper and then the pass to Philip Riley here for the touchdown under pressure, and you see his right hand go up. He waited a whole year to come back from that loss last year, and he said he just uh, had that sick feeling, and he, he wanted to absorb as much as he could, but uh, he was going to erase that tonight. He's in Fort Lauderdale. His dad is uh, one of the team doctors for the, for the Miami Dolphins. And he only played two years in high school, so he really relatively young as far as quarterbacking uh, goes. Mike Phipps was his high school coach, former Browns quarterback. It's going to be Magic Menton with the return for Miami. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. This uh, whack-like shootout, this McDonald's breakaway, has ended in Minnesota. Chris Darkins, 294 yards on the night and three touchdowns. After he scored, 
And that was on another play, not the one we saw. Minnesota goes for two and makes it, so they're up one. But Brad Bobich couldn't kick the game-winning field goal for Purdue. Minnesota, 1-0 in the Big Ten, beat Purdue by one. 294 yards. Mike Lombardi, who's the personnel director of the Browns, talked to me about Chris Darkins. We in the summer, he said, look out for that running back. Well, Covington has come in at quarterback. And uh, right off the bat, we got a dead ball foul. Ball start. Ball start. So we're dealing with a, a different cadence. Down. New quarterback, and uh, he's greeted with a five-yarder right off the bat. Now, I like Scott Covington. What, what I watched to him in practice at Miami before the season started, now, he missed all spring practice with surgery. Larry Coker, the quarterback coach, said, had he gotten the opportunity that Ryan Clement got, he would have done the same good job at Virginia Tech. Ferguson to the left side. Oh, a pretty good collision there. You could hear the pop. Vernon Crawford, 47. Comes up to uh, fill the hole. Scott Covington has a strong arm. Very highly recruited player out of Laguna, California. Gets his chance with 12 minutes on the clock. He's even a little bit taller than uh, Ryan Clint. Ryan is 6'2", and Scott is listed as uh, 6'3". Both with good size, around 200 pounds. His first pass lobs it out there just beyond the outstretched hands of Yatil Green. Well, we talked about running backs a little bit ago. Troy Davis, Iowa State, uh, had that good ball game again where he went over a thousand yards. He's from Miami, Southridge High School. He's lost so many players in the state of Florida, but his brother was on a pace to break his records in high school and he broke his leg down there. So there's a lot of good running backs coming out of that Miami area also. This state has really produced just tons and tons of great football players in the, the biggest percentage of three really good football teams mm -hmm. and about uh, another 150 go out to other schools scholarship drop play with Ferguson weaves his way finally caught from behind by Wadsworth Andre plays behind Canal Spain and uh, we've called his number several times since he's come in and he's only a sophomore and I would think that we're going to see Thad Busby now, and then you're going to see another impressive quarterback come off that bench for Florida State. I think this guy really, Thad Busby, has a great career, not only here ahead, but he's going to be uh, playing in the NFL someday. Chrissy's kick, Bearcats is called for, and is made at the 40. Well, the 1995 college basketball season tips off next Saturday with Midnight Madness. ESPN comes to you live from Maryland, Virginia, and Michigan. But what about ESPN2? Well, the Deuce will be in Kansas, Minnesota, and Mississippi State. One week from tonight, Midnight Madness. Thad Busby comes in at quarterback. He is out of pace, Florida. Which also is right down in the area where the storm came through earlier this week. You see his numbers. Play action. Puts it on his hip. And it is caught. That's Duggins. Forty-two yards. Welcome to the game, Dad. A good start for Thad Busby. He's an impressive quarterback, and I don't know how they keep getting quarterbacks here. They just keep coming to school here, even though there's some great ones on campus against Earl Little, number four. Thad Busby with a good throw to Ron Duggins. You know what? And they wait their turn. That's the interesting thing about it. You know what Bobby said in the meeting yesterday? He's going after another one this year because of the fact he thinks they're down one or two. They need a couple of more quarterbacks. Yeah, they can put them each, on each other's back. I mean, they've got so many good quarterbacks. you got Kendra on the sideline, mm -hmm. who was a highly recruited player out of Pennsylvania. Everybody thought he was going to go to Penn State. And then you're, you talk about Dan Kendra, the freshman. He's going to redshirt. They say he could be a linebacker. And then Randy Moss, who was signed in Notre Dame and then 
uh, ran into a problem. Lou Holtz called Bobby Bowden, told him he thought he should take him, and they're going to bring him in here. He's in here in school right now. Going to be a great wide receiver for Florida State. Not going to play this year. Mike, the coaches say they are redshirting three wide receivers that are as good as any they've ever had here. So looks like the production line continues. Busby caught from behind. It's Kenny Holmes. He will sack him back at the 21-yard line. That's the kind of front uh, play that you expect out of Miami. Kenny Holmes making the sack on Thad Busby. He really didn't buy the fake at all. Stayed right with the quarterback to sack him. Kamari Charlton coming out of the lineup. Loss of six on the play. Clock running. We're now under 10 left of the ball game. Florida State 38 to 10. And you can see Kevin Long, 51, a sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina, has come in replacing Shiver at center. To the 16, Burgess will trip him up. And it's going to be fourth down. But Bentley will come on, and uh, the crowd doesn't agree. They want to, they'd like to score as many as they can. On Miami. Well, there's not a lot of love lost either way. Miami and Florida State or Florida you State. You hear the same reaction if we were in the orange exactly. goal and the shoe was on the other foot. And that other school in the middle down there, they have the same reaction. <laughs> they like to <laughs> let them have it. Let's see if Bentley can uh, go to two or four, and he does. Right down Pensacola Avenue on that one. Let's take a break. 38 10, Seminoles on top. Linebacker Burgess, that's Ray Lewis, just to his left. Also, Twan Russell, number 45. This is a tough pill to swallow for these young guys because, as Mike said, because of the very strong feeling by these schools about each other, it's uh, to lose is one thing, but to, to really get shattered is something else. And they're the most scored. 41 points and Ron they haven't Miami hasn't been one in three since 1976 so they have uh, had a lot of success gonna be magic Benton on the run at the 12 you hope he becomes a player with that name magic that's a, Benton. that's a great name if he doesn't run a little lower on the kickoff, though, he's not going to be a player. He's, he's going to disappear, huh? He's going to disappear. <laughs> it's uh, been the knees in the back a little bit more. It'll be interesting how Miami uh, reacts from this loss because they still, as I said before, they still have the chance, now that they're in a league, the Big East, they still can play for a league title. So I think that's the thing Butch Davis will want to come out of this game, find out the recipe that he needs to take into the Big East the rest of the way to try to win that league again. Covington's pass and it's dropped. Trent Jones hit him right in the side and he just dropped it. Now the remaining schedule, Mike. Yeah, they, they've got a schedule that they can win some ball games there. There's no dominating football team on the remaining schedule. So they still have a chance, even though they've got a loss in the league at Virginia Tech. It's a league that's wide open. A lot of competitive teams in the East Big East. Joseph in motion. Covington gets by the first pressure, will not get by Bullwell. Four sacks by Florida State tonight. Bullwell is really impressive because he's a very good pass rusher. They like him in in pass situations because he really has a quick start out of his stance. He really moves number 58, being blocked here by Jay Johnson, number 74, just gets by him and then takes Scott Covington to the ground. Third down. Line to make is the 35-yard line. Jones gets this one, and then it's going to be tackled by Sam Cowell. Sam leads the team in tackles, and you can see his agility 
the quickest of the linebackers, and he's there to snuff out that swing pass. Oh, coming up, the residents in uh, scoreboard, the Colorado upset, Northwestern wins, and Eddie gets number 400. That and more. This is Pruitt punting this time instead of Chrissy, and, boy, this is not very pretty, but at the 41, Feaster is tackled immediately, and let's check in with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron and Mike, all night long we have talked about the great, great athletic talent on the field tonight, but how about the unsung heroes, our centers of attention, like Casey Jones and Clay Shiver of Florida State. Clay is so smart, he makes all the line calls. A great blocker, Danny Cannell, even lets him watch films with him. And Casey Jones, he'll play on Sunday afternoons, likens himself to Mark Stepnowski, and he passed blocks like a maniac. But Clay Shiver, this guy is a quarterback trapped in the center's body. It's something he wanted to do all of his life, but hasn't had a chance. Maybe the way the game's going, Bobby Bottom has put him behind another center. You know, Mike, it's interesting that uh, Casey likens himself or he likes to watch Stepnowski because Shiver told me yesterday the same thing, and I think it's probably because Stepnowski is a little bit undersized compared to, to some of the centers in the league, and both of these guys are comparable in size. Shiver's about 6'2", 270. Casey is uh, 6'2", 257. But they are both very, very good young prospects for the NFL. Draw play, and it's going to be Feaster. Feaster is a freshman out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. And he was the player of the year in South Carolina, and a big recruiting battle in Florida State ended up with him, and uh, the coaches are real impressed with his quickness. They say he's just like Warwick Dunn. So they really don't lose anything when Warwick Dunn's out of there, Rock Preston's in there, and then you get Feaster on the field. So they've got the same kind of backs. Can't be a, a tailback here, Mike, and be over 5'9". That's, that's what it looks like, because both Warwick... Rock and D are all that size. Cookie cutters. <laughs> Bad Busby. Rolls out. Close to Feaster. See what he can do in the open field. Well, he does look a lot like Dunn or Preston, doesn't he? Well done. He's uh, passing his approval on the young Feaster. It's always interesting that as we, we follow these teams and we see these kids as freshmen and as sophomore, junior, and as they move on up the ladder, but particularly looking at Warwick there, they, this young man I've always thought has been extremely mature because of what he went through in an earlier time in his life, losing his mom, what happened out of Baton Rouge, but he is extremely mature uh, right now as a junior in college. This running play goes straight ahead to the 33. Kenny Holmes is down at the bottom of the pile. When you talk about the running back situation, uh, Chuck Amato was telling us a story the other day about uh, Bobby Bowden in Danielle Ferguson's home and uh, recruiting him. And he said, you know, he, all of a sudden, Chuck Amato almost fell off the couch. He said, son, you know we got a lot of good running backs there. Why do you want to come there? And Chuck Amato said, why did you say that after? He said, I want to be honest with him. He said, we do have some good running backs there. And, uh, so Danielle opted to go to, first of all, committed to Notre Dame and then decided on Miami. Yeah, Chuck said they walked out and got in the car, and he said, Coach, why did you say that? <laughs> Dead ball foul, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. And I'll tell you, Florida State would talk about the running backs, but they got a lot of great receivers on this field, too. Starting with number one, Andre Cooper. Big play offense, big play uh, going up for the football. The, the passes that they can jump for. Here's Philip Riley making the catch. Abdullah, the freshman out of Davie, Florida, carries on that play, and it's uh, Vinnie Portman. When you, you look at those throws, Ron, and we talked about R.C. Owens when, when I was a kid. They used to talk about the alley-oop pass, and R.C. Owens probably watching, maybe watching this game tonight. He'd admire these guys because the ball really is put up for grabs, and and when you throw it up, and uh, Andre Cooper in that 6-2 frame, and uh, Wayne Messam made a catch tonight, that 6-4 frame, they are able to make the quarterback look pretty good. Kenny Holmes will get the sack. 
Look out, Terry. Terry Monk, the referee, with a smile on his face, and he hops right back up, but he got caught in the melee. Well, Terry, uh, he <laughs> flies out of Mobile because he's over in Mississippi. Uh, he really is a good official and a real likable guy, but uh, I don't think they're going to give Kenny Holmes any more than one sack there for taking Terry Monk down, too. <laughs> Probably officially should say at least one and a half. Terry's probably saying, you know, it's been a long night. I should have been out of the way here, but I kind of fell asleep and was counting my money here a little bit. Well, the umpire got hit earlier. Yeah. He got rolled up. He's okay. This is Denton on the return. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, it starts with college game day. 12.30, Penn State takes on Purdue. 3.30 and 7, it scores and highlights. At 7.30, Tennessee marches into Alabama. And at 10.30, we put a period on the day. Next Saturday, of course, Tennessee's had problems with Alabama. And, you know, really, that's been one of those kind of games they haven't been able to get over the hump. I thought that was a big win for the balls today because also Arkansas has been a nemesis for them in recent years. German, and he stopped at the 27. Uh, Ron, we, we talked earlier tonight, Deion Sanders, of course, on, and I thought it was really a great gesture with the equipment manager, what he did. Uh, showed me a little class in Deion Sanders tonight, and but I'm a little disappointed. I thought maybe Lee Corso's jersey would have been retired here. You know, that little, that little quarterback, uh, highly recruited. And there he is, interception leaders. He's tied with uh, the only thing he might be tied with interceptions, but not money. Because Dion got a lot more money than Lee Corso. <laughs> Ball is incomplete as it hits right in the hands of Chris C. Jones and popped out and in the collision game. You, did, you didn't, uh, you know, you agree as you see Lee there. Uh, he may have as much money as uh, Dion. What do you think? Dressing like he's got a lot of money. He may have more. And he's keeping it, too. <laughs> no, he doesn't know enough Jones like Leon no. <laughs> Dion does. Or the right Jones, anyway. 257 left in our ball game, 41 to 10. Florida State. Covington continues to go at quarterback. Swings it out to McMillan. Gets by one tackler, and then we'll go out of bounds. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. All right, Ron, as you guys look ahead to Tennessee, Alabama next week, Brian Bergdorf hits Ed Schism today with his touchdown. Crimson Tide lead 10-0 at that point, go on to a 27-11 win over North Carolina State. 17-25. of The offense needed that at Alabama because last week in the big outburst in the 31 points, still there was the defensive special team. Yeah, but there. you like that, though. If your defense <laughs> is going to give you those points, uh, I read a quote by Gene Stallings where he said, hey, our defense was playing so well, there was no sense in really opening it up. Hard to take the defense off the field to keep them running it up. Yeah. They always play great defense at Alabama. Yep, they do. Covington with his pass. Has it complete at the 48. Mike, I see what you mean. This youngster really has a nice motion. He I'm really throws well. I'm telling you, I'm impressed with uh, Scott Covington because uh, he's got a good uh, eyes. He's got good vision. He's got a good release. He's a strong arm. It's 6'3 frame. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about him down in Miami. Coming up next, Residence in College Football Scoreboard. And Alabama defense will get a challenge with Peyton Manning because uh, they're going to see a different Peyton Manning than they saw a year ago. And he is knocked down, Andre Wadsworth. Well, we mentioned that he had come in replacing Spain. I mean, he's had a very good night. Chuck Amato likes to roll the defensive line coach. He likes to roll eight defensive linemen in the game just for the fourth quarter. So he's got fresh people. Andre Wadsworth, good sack on Scott Covington. Good smart move by Scott Covington. He couldn't get rid of that football. There's no sense in throwing it up. No, good decision just to tuck it and take the sack. It's five times Miami quarterbacks have been sacked this evening. Under two minutes to play. Tipped and incomplete. And now it's time for tonight's Visa Players of the Game. As the flag goes down. Uh, 
pass interference on the defense. Five foul, first down. Well, the Visa player of the game from the Miami Hurricanes. Kenny Holmes, seven tackles, two sacks, and two breakups. And from Florida State, Warwick Dunn. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Dunn, 20 carries, 185 yards. Really good, uh, good pressure by Florida State tonight in their front four. They've been really been able to get to the quarterback tonight, sack-wise and pressure-wise. Covington swings it out to Trent Jones. Inside the 45, he lost the football, but the officials are saying he had stepped out of bounds, so the ball was dead. Another good decision by Scott Covington. Talked about the front four tonight being the key to the ball game. I think both front fours really had a pretty good evening, but Florida State... When you take those five sacks and two pressures out of that front four, especially Renard Wilson and Andre Wadsworth, uh, Peter Boulware, they really got some play and pressure on the quarterback. Mickey Andrews has to be happy with that tonight. He doesn't look happy, but he, he probably deep down inside, he's a happy man. Not well, going to show it up. Well, this, this was a good test, and a lot of people passed it well. Covington's pass complete. Magic Benton breaks away, and he will score the touchdown. You see what I'm talking about release-wise with Scott Covington? I mean, he really throws a nice football. It's a good release, good wrist action. And our man, our new man, Magic Benton, for the touchdown. The Magic Man. It's a real nice throw by Scott Covington. Holds that ball in there, good zip on it to Magic. And then the Magic getting in the end zone. But again, just another and a long list. You saw how well he ran. This game is never devoid of great athletes, is it? Put with the extra point attempt. He gets it. And with 113 showing on the clock, it's now 41 17. Oh, don't forget, coming up next, the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard. Colorado upset today. Northwestern wins again, and Eddie gets number 400. Yeah, congratulations to Eddie Robinson. That's a, that's a uh, great achievement. Mike Adamley, get your comments about this ball game tonight. From the first quarter to right now, uh, metamorphosis as far as the Seminoles are concerned, right? Well, again, we've talked about their talent and their ability to, uh, I don't know, play with anybody. Deion Sanders did give the pregame pep talk tonight. He and William Floyd did. They talked about, I'm talking to Chuck, Chuck Amato right now, about their experiences in this game. They knew they had to have it to make a run at the national championship, and they are impressive. And so are my Wildcats, man. I, this, is a, this is a great day. This is a great day. And my brother, Vic, who's an assistant coach at Kansas, Great night for the Adamley family. How, how did Kent Roosevelt do today? You know, in high school. I haven't talked to my dad yet, but I'll do that as soon as this game is over. By the way, speaking of those schools, uh, Mark Williams of Kansas, the quarterback, 25 of 35 today, Mike. 299 yards and a touchdown. And uh, June Henley of KU, 23 carries, 137 yards, and two touchdowns for him. Some of the other top performances today. Uh, Bobby Hoyne, Ohio State, uh, 24 of 35, 354 yards and three touchdowns. But Terry Glenn, the wide receiver from Ohio State, nine catches, 175 yards and two touchdowns. So we have 113 left to play. Both teams, special teams, going to the sideline to get last moment instructions on the onside kick that is about to come as we take a look at Florida State's schedule. Wake Forest, then Georgia Tech. Then on the second, they have Virginia. That one on Thursday night that you'll see on ESPN. They've got back-to-back -back games there with Virginia and North Carolina. It's going to be a real big test. And, of course, that 
November 25th game down the road will be a match of some pretty good offenses. So let's take a break. 113 left in the ball game. We'll be right back. So you look at the alignment. And of course, with the cottage rule that has changed in the last couple of years, you have to have seven men on one side of the ball. Can't have less than seven. In fact, Miami got a penalty against VPI two weeks ago because they looped that man right next to the kicker over to the other side, leaving only three on one side. That's a violation. Onside's kick is touched and now recovered by Florida State at the 45. E.G. Green, part of the Good Hands team. Number 19, sophomore out of Fort Walton Beach, gets the recovery. Crowd is standing and cheering as the players on the sideline are turning and waving their hands, trying to get them fired up one more time. Thad Busby back in at quarterback. Feaster takes it back in toward the boundary. A couple of yards in the play. And I'll tell you, the umpire got run over again, didn't he? This has been a tough night on the officials. Is that the umpire or the... That's the umpire, Ron Clay. Just They're going to need the whirlpool after the game. <laughs> At their age, they do not come back as fast as these players. <laughs> you speak from experience, I know. Well, some of the hurricanes on the sideline, and as we mentioned, this is an extremely tough pill to swallow. Never like to lose to the Seminoles, just as the Seminoles never like to lose to the Canes, but particularly by this margin. Feaster straight ahead, and that could be the last play of our ball game. as Derek Cam comes up to make the tackle. Bobby Bowden looks up at the scoreboard. Teams are beginning to head on the field, and this one will go in the books as a solid win for the Seminoles of Florida State. That's the end of our ball game with the final score. Florida State 41, Miami 17. For Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley, this is Ron Franklin saying so long from Tallahassee. The residents in college football scoreboard is next. Let's join Mike Tirico. Mike? All right, Ron, thanks. See you guys in Birmingham next week for 10.